so stupid. I can't. It's a good question. Uh, no, it's not. What the fuck is up, everybody? Welcome to the fuckery with Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus. I'm Lenny Marcus. And I'm Leslie Jones. This is the podcast where the mission is to keep it 100 at all times. We talk about the fuckery going on in the world and in our lives. We're, we're, we're having a whole lot of fun doing it. In the studio you today, know? we have one of the best in the business, comedian Tom Papa. We'll play a little game with Tom because he is a lot of fun. But first, what the fuck is up, Leslie? Friday, March 25th, Royal Oak Music Hall, Royal Oak, Michigan. Come see us. Hopefully it won't be freezing there by that time, March 25th. I'm hoping for way better weather. Listen, I have to thank you. Let's get get into it. Um, Gina's birthday was last week. Oh we go to Budokan and you surprise us with picking up that bill. Budokan is the greatest restaurant. I love doing gangster shit. Like I, it was, you're the best. It's, that was I so good. Lo- the one thing I love about having money is money really does like you know people say uh what do they say it doesn't buy you happiness uh yeah. i beg to differ gina doesn't believe that either she's uh, like let me have a uh, shot at it let me yeah exactly <laughs> like uh, let me show you kind of what happiness could you you know you know what i'm saying <laughs> let me show you how to actually buy some happiness you know so it made me happy it's, yeah exactly <laughs> and the one thing that i love that i could do like i have been thinking about this the yeah. last couple of months i was like yo dude like you're you got money. You, everything is taken care of. What do you want to do? Like, what do you want to do? Like, I know I like going to the Sparks game. That is my yep. fucking shit. And they have a good team, I think, this year. And we might go to the playoffs. Like, I'm going to go to the playoff games in the other cities. Like, I'm going to do that for myself. That makes me yep. happy. Like, when people have birthdays, like, do you know how dope it was for me to call Budokan? And, like, because they was like, I was like, what? That's why I kept saying, what reservation are you under and shit? And, and I was like, yeah, when they get there, like, let them get settled. Let them do all that and and just just call me. And she called me, paid the bill, tipped the waiter, all that shit. It, it's just like money talks, baby, sometimes. Oh and it's, God, I it like so doing good. that type of stuff for my friends. Like, that is dope shit to get a text of saying, bitch, the, you pay for the dinner? How the fuck did you do that? I love that shit. I love it. I have... I've never been so full in my life. That it's we went the other place. week when we did the Daily Show. Oh my god, I was so good. I, I was blown away. You got me by, you know, I literally ate everything that was on that table. I told you. And, I told you. Yeah. Yep. I told him and I was like, like I went sure. back there I'm like I'm getting that thing. Yep. I'm getting that thing. Did you get oxtail? Gonna... We didn't. Nobody else would get it with me, so I didn't I didn't get it. Oh, you're such a bitch. But, that that I disappoints know, I me. I didn't even look the at the bill. Cuz if I would have saw that you didn't get oxtail, I would have ordered it and made you take it home. You know what? That's funny. I really want it now. <laughs> and that's fucked go, up because it's it. so fucking good. And when I it come there, good. we're going. Fuck that. Because Budokan Sweet. is the bomb. Budokan bomb. Let's they got it. the rock shrimp too. Oh my God, so good. Ugh, that shrimp. I mean, Neil's never been happier in his life. Yeah, because Neil, um, has Neil ever been there? I don't think so. No. And he was a foodie, so he loved it. But also, you bought her fancy earrings. Yeah. You bought baby. her Lisa Leslie sneakers. You know, she did well. My wife did well. I got her an eye, a new eye watch, you know, flowers. She went to a bathhouse. Her friend took her to like this bathhouse. Oh, like, yeah. I heard about those. Those yeah. are kind of fun. And they had fun. Yeah. Yeah. They had a I, great time. Yeah. And and see, the, it, it was so, I love when Gina she asked for day. stuff because when she said, I was like, what do you want? Like, this is what I always tell people. If you could afford it, what would you buy yourself? Like, and I mean, I've had people be smart ass and you'd be like car house or whatever and then what i do yeah. is get them a little miniature house and then two gift uh gift certificates to somewhere to get your nails and feet done see because you could have had what you really wanted so um um which i asked her i was like what do you want and she was like honestly i want some hoop earrings i want some gold hoop really earrings she was like i want some gold hoop earrings and something else she asked for and then she asked for something from that store uh that you always buy stuff from her yeah and then me and brian daughter. was like i was like I don't think I, and I went to look at that site. I was like, I'm not buying that shit. And it's just, I'm like, I don't want to see her in that. No. Nope. And I know I'm supposed to make the person happy. I was going to get yeah. her a gift card to it, but I was like, why do I feel like if I got her some Lisa Leslie's though, she was going to love those. Like she's going to love the Lisa Leslie. So, freaked out. and I went and me and Brian look for those hoops. Like I actually got the same hoops cause they're so dope. So. I, They're amazing. And the Lisa Leslie Sleekers, I sent you a picture. You know who yes, really loved them? Yes, right? Birdie. Birdie, oh, May, Marcus. So yeah. And t- tell her, like, Dressing those are up. limited editions. And I hope that she wears them <laughs> when we go to the game. 
Oh yeah, I think that's where she's breaking them in. Yeah, you can see that's it gonna coming. be hot. She's not taking them anywhere because we right because yeah. we right on the fucking court. So you know they're gonna yep. take a picture. They took a picture of her the last time, and she was like, "Shit!" I, I was like, yep. "She was everywhere." On her, everybody was like, "Who's that in the pink hat?" Who's that girl? And why? Yeah. And why is she on her phone? She's on the phone. She's on the court. She's, because people are looking at her, going, "Are you in the front row right now?" Yeah, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. We had fun. Well, I'll get to go. You're coming to town, and so I'll I get to go. From, am to so one excited I cannot because wait. I am so because we always had to see. We always give the basketball yeah. games to Brian because you know Brian liked right. to go to the basketball game, but you would go to the late Yankee games. But yeah. now I get to take you to the freaking Knicks game, and I get to actually honestly see you lose your shit, and oh you you not understanding how crazy I am. So we might get kicked out. <laughs> They always give me my card when I get there. They give me that warning card when I sit down. They just yeah. hand it to me and be like, "You yeah. know what it is." I hope I'll be. You got to play good basketball, or I lose my mind. Oh my god, I Lenny, lose my mind. We and all they are lose playing our mind. incredible right now. They, the Knicks are, are won the last Brunson six. They beat the Celtics the other night. Brunson is Brunson. my baby right now. Him yeah, and, 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 and who's the two that who's the tall guy? The tall the um uh the the big the big uh the big dude y'all got. I can't yeah. I never yeah, can yeah, think yeah. of his name. Um, oh, it's the star with a K, don't it? Or something like that. Oh no. God, I love that guy. He's Why really very, very, very talented. Oh my God. It's just a great Knicks team. I'm I'm rooting for him. They are very good, RJ Barron. All those guys are playing well. Uh, I mean it's they got this guy Grimes. He plays great defense. Yes. Oh my God, yeah. Lenny, you're gonna have so much fun. So the first game, I'm going with Brian. Julius the Randall. Point. There it is, Julius. Yes, Randall. Randall. Right. I don't know why I thought K, but um, the first game I'm going with with Brian, and then the second yep. game is gonna be with Gina, and then Gina. the third game is gonna be and with you. I'm taking it home. That's I... right. So intention, Jalen Brunson. We're coming. Yeah, J- <laughs> J- Jalen. I met his mom too, so we can't. You don't say nothing bad to him because I know his mother. Oh, absolutely not. His mother no, I love will his fuck game. us up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be at the strip. Come, everybody, everybody's always asking me where the I'm. The comic performing. strip. That's where Leslie's gonna be. I'm gonna come be to a show. Strip. We're f- just tweaking the hour, so we'll get. You'll get to see us before we go on the the roadie road. Oh my god, you get to see, see the animal porn joke being made. <laughs> yep. Um. All right, we'll be right back. I just want to take a quick break, and we'll be right back right after this. And we're back. Leslie, Mm -hmm. have I asked, ever told you about this story? Did you hear this story? Dr. Phil is ending after years of scandals. Good riddance, critics say. 21 years of this nonsense is finally over. Dr. Phil was still on the air? Yeah, this whole time. Oh, dude, I literally thought he had got canceled, like, Years ago, like when Oprah left, I thought Dr. I didn't know Dr. Phil no. still was on the air. That no, is some real him. shit. That's you just told me Donahue's still on air. Like what the fuck? I <laughs> literally did no. not know that Phil was still on the air. Yeah, he's still on the air spewing this nonsense. Oh wow. Finally, they finally okay, figured well, this guy nonsense? out. Like, All right, every done. time I see Dr. Phil, he cursing out some bad kid. And then uh, what's the nonsense he's been spewing? Tell me. Cause I don't I, well, he's got, I like, thought the man honestly, I thought the man had passed away. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Phil. Yeah. Well, he's had these that let's see, off screen storms. One of the host's early controversies involved Britney Spears during the peak of her mid aughts mental health struggles. McGraw was permitted to visit her while she was being ho- hospitalized. He later made public statements about the visit that alienated her family and less- left them yelling at Dr. Phil for betraying their trust. So that was one. Well, the man, what did he do? COVID- what did he do? What he told them that know. they was keeping her prisoner or something? I have no idea. I now, I'm trying to figure out because scandals. every time I've ever watched Dr. Phil, I've never seen him say something. But I, like I said, said, again, that was years ago. I thought he got canceled. Over, so. He was trying to insert himself into these stories, of course, for, for entertainment value. Because That's what he is. He's on TV. That's the thing. He's no, not he's, a doctor. Yeah, but he's on TV. He's a television show. That's the problem with you motherfuckers. Y'all think this shit is real. It's pretend place. It's pretend yeah. land. It's TikTok. All that. It's not real. Live your real life. Stop trying to live TV life. Yes, don't believe stuff on TV. Ooh, did you know that half the products that you see commercials for, if it's not a toothpaste or a cleaning product, it's probably not true. Because it's (laughs) pretend land. That's why we have things called actors. Because they act out stuff. That's not real. Because it's pretend. That's the, and stop trying to base your life. That's that's what the problem is. Everybody trying to base their life on a reality show on and and that's not pretend. It's pretend. It's called entertainment. You turn on the television, 
and you get this show that's not real, like a box that shows you images. You're supposed to not believe everything that you you. Oh Jesus, wept! I feel like I'm well, talking they, to people fucking are, idiots. Well, that's the problem that, that like the people think he's a real doctor, and instead of taking the entertainment value at what it is, Lenny, you know, let me they ask you a question. Look, do at, you listen, think Dr. Dre high, is a doctor? Do you think Dr. Dre is a doctor? <laughs> no, I mean I'm asking you a really question. And do you think Captain Crunch is ha, a captain? Ha, ha. No, so I'm, people, I'm asking. I bet you people. I'm just asking. I'm, I'm really sure asking. there are people out there think Dr. Dre is a doctor. Then they're fucking stupid. Then yeah. we put those people in a room and you go, hey, you can watch this show. <laughs> well, he's had legal battles because of this. <sighs> and, you know. I mean, I mean, Maury Povich, do you really think you, Maury, Maury ain't doing nothing but sending it to a lot. Lord help us, Jesus. What's it's sad that I have to talk to humans and say, "Yeah, it, uh, why did you believe him?" No, but he'd still be on the air if he wasn't such a goofball. You know? What no, I mean? he, like if he old as Methuselah, child. That man is He's old. That I old. met that dude. He was he he old. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, I mean, we got so many other problems in the world, Father God. We 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 got we got COVID. We got we got election shit. We got we got women's rights. And you motherfuckers worried about what? I, I, uh, seriously, I thought he had already got canceled. Y'all worried about this old hillbilly ass motherfucker? You you don't stop <laughs> believing shit on TV. Stop it. She ain't got us though. <laughs> oh. ah. Well, anyway, bye, Doctor Phil. Yeah, bye. We don't need it. Yeah, you made millions. I I still <laughs> I'm glad to know that you ain't dead. Cause I sure thought you yeah. was. No, he's still around. But you know, I gotta thank Oprah because she was wrong on a lot of people. One was Dr. Phil, one Ooh, was Dr. Oz. She was really know. wrong. I mean, what does really she really wrong? I mean, okay, this is the thing that I want to say. I about want Oprah Dr. on the show just to tell me yeah, how she feels about yeah, well, this. Well, this is the thing. Were they crazy when she started like have that like when did, did they did Dr. Oz turn crazy or was he yes, always Yes, I think this he person? turned crazy. Yeah, he, he was, was probably this, this person. person, but given the opportunity to hawk really weird medicines, you know, like, you know, supplements or whatever this about for the a lot of money. That he did something to puppies oh yeah he was killing puppies yeah he was something. killing yeah, puppies was and shit like testing on puppies happened. so that's that's yeah. some deep-rooted shit that ain't no before yeah. that was before oprah i'm i'm like oprah who is your background checker <laughs> she should have done a lot of background checking on but she's also doing background checking on that guy who wrote the book james fry remember a million little pieces or whatever that was a mental health book helped a lot of people turn out all made up what, what, All what, made what, up. Yeah, see, that's see, Something I wouldn't. Like that. So Oprah's not, you know. I don't know who that guy is, but I wouldn't believe him. I mean, <sighs> is the secret real? I mean, all that shit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all those self help books. Just, help yourself. Just, oh, she, she was wrong about a couple of people. That's why I don't be giving people, yeah. like, you know, recommendations unless you, like, I really know you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Leslie Jones said. Fuck that. Nah, Leslie Jones didn't say shit. I told you that motherfucker was crazy. That's what I would say if you come to me. I ain't tell you shit. I told you she was crazy. And I don't be lying. When people come to me and ask me about people, I'll be like, nah, you know what? Listen, they probably a nice person, but this, this, and this happened. Fuck that. I don't let nobody walk into a door that's going to smack them in the mouth. I really yeah. don't. Like, don't. And and I'm look, I'm for, listen, you recommend me, I'm going to do what the fuck I'm supposed to do. But don't take my recommendation and shit on it. Go in there and show your Meanwhile. Ass. And finally, the only thing I have left is whoever invented glitter needs to die a death. Yeah, how do you not know about children love babe? glitter. It well, multiplies, I know about babe, glitter. like roaches. I know, it's it's gross. And it's everywhere in my house. Yep. Everything that's made with glitter. Yep. And people send Bertie glitter pictures and, and, and glitter you, stuff to play with. I'm threaten like, them. you threaten their yeah. life. That's what you do. We when they be. when they send that, you send it back to them and you go, if you ever send this to my house again, I will defriend you and I will have you killed. That's what you have to tell people yeah. with glitter because people with glitter don't understand. They think everybody likes glitter and you got to really let them know. Like, I love glitter. If you send me glitter shit, I don't mind seeing glitter around my house because I love <laughs> glitter. But you a man. You got to tell motherfuckers because like glitter, you put like, let's yeah. take, you take your finger and one stick dot. it in glitter. One dot. You will see the, that dot for 10 years. Now, Kate yep. has a great story. If we ever had Kate on here, I will tell you. Kate McKinnon. I, make sure I tell you this story about how, mm -hmm. how she say the glitter ends up on your face. Like, you know how you had that one piece of glitter on your face? Yep. It's a whole story and it's one of the best <laughs> stories I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Well, right now I have a stripper running around my house because there's glitter everywhere and she runs around naked. That's what my four Don't and a half year old Don't say that. Gina, see, you do. know what? Judith will cut that wrong. And Judith, a lot and, of and, naked. And, and, and Gina will hear it and all she'll hear is, oh, while Gina's gone, there's a stripper that runs around and there's a lot of naked. <laughs> so You're going to edit the birdie part out? I swear to God, I will call <laughs> Judith and I'll be like, Judith, make that happen. Yeah, four and a half year olds love to be naked and play with glitter. What does that say? I don't know. <laughs> oh, you better talk mess. to her about that. Oh, you might have a stripper yeah. on your hand or a magician. That's right. Either that. I got a <laughs> <laughs> a stripper or a magician. <laughs> a stripping magician. That's my daughter. We'll be right back with Tom Papa oh my God, right that's after this. Hilarious. Welcome <laughs> back, everybody. Now it's time for who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is this? Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> we welcome an interview special guest on the show who also will sing his own intro. Today we have a great stand-up comedian, one of the best in the business, actor and radio host with over 25 years of stand-up experience. Yes. Our guest is a staple in the comedy world. His latest Netflix special is entitled Tom Papa, What a Day! He hosts the daily Netflix show called What a Joke with Papa and Fortune on Sirius XM's Netflix channel. Check out his new podcast, Breaking Bread, with Tom Papa, where he and a special guest eat, drink, and enjoy life. Plus, his book entitled We're All in This Together, So Make Some Room is available for pre-order on Amazon. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Tom Papa! Dun, 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 Tom! Which he Thank didn't, you, Lenny. Welcome, Tom Papa. he didn't bring me any of that bread, but welcome, Tom. Yeah, I bring you bread I, to your house. Yeah, welcome, I bring Tom. you to bread on my studio. I've had one welcome, piece Tom. of that bread. One. Yeah. What? Wait, wait, wait a minute. He was, stayed in my house. He had one piece of that bread. I gave bread. Leslie a bread that was she, she was supposed to hand it. over to you. Well, oh, oh, I don't know what? of such bread. I don't what? know of such fucking bread. Sounds like someone ate it. I, I do not know of such sounds fucking like bread. Of, uh, I do not know of sounds one. Sounds like some, when we put was some that? butter when on the that gift. Fuck was that? <laughs> was that like, was not. That was a long time ago. Because I was going to say, when did you start doing? When did you start making yeah. bread? Um, when did this start, and why? About, why did this start? About, uh, t I don't know, six, eight years ago, something like that. When did so it wasn't a COVID. It wasn't a COVID thing. It was no, a thing. all of these new people that are like, we're into bread because there's yeah, a pandemic. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're right. not doing it now. And you got a bread oven, so like you're serious about this I shit. I know what I'm doing. You got <laughs> and I make, I, I, ha I actually had one. I made this one with, um, with all purpose, whole wheat and rye. And mm. I wrapped it up and I put it and I had an extra one and I put it in the freezer. And I thought today, maybe I should bring Lazily the, the one that was frozen, but I oh. was worried that if you defrost it, will it not be exactly oh, as good, good as okay, right? That's what you're so I apologize. Well, mm. question though, like yes. this is a question, like whenever you like because I I love all the bacon shows. You mm. know, I'm a crazy motherfucker, especially the English bacon show. Yeah, I love that too. Do you think you would do well on that? Um, no. You think you would only do good on Bread Week? <laughs> I, on Bread Week, I would do great. But you think you would fuck yeah. up the rest of the dessert? And once you start bringing me into Macron's <laughs> and Eclairs and Tiramisu's, <laughs> I'd be the guy that's all like gloopy and panic and sweat, <laughs> shit on his hands. He's trying to stuff it all together at the end, trying to tuck things under. That'd be me. I'm not, I'm uh, not good. Once I get out of bread, bread is good and sloppy. You well, know? Okay, do you think yeah. that they should have maybe a cooking show that just focuses on bread? Yes, that's what I've been trying to make. I love that show. I had a traveling the, I show would so on watch the Food that Network show. where I was going yes, to bakeries all that. around the country. I remember that. Yes. 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 No, you should have a competition. Ah, uh, really? No, have the seven seven people just like they do with the English Baker Show and make it friendly like the English Baker Show because that's why we like I it. I know. Because they're so nice to each other. But do you think America you, would make that? Everyone's so yes, cutthroat yes. in the, in I the honestly, Food Network. Honestly, I honestly believe that I think that we went through a period of mean shit. Uh -huh. I really think that everybody's like, yo, man, fuck it. I want, like, like right now, yeah. like, the, you know how we used to watch the, the, you know, all this stuff. Now, I only want to watch shit that makes me feel good. Now. I know. So I think that America's like that now, too. And yeah. everybody, that is one of the most watched shows is the English Baker Show. I know. And the yeah. first thing that everybody says 
everybody's so nice to each other. I know. I think America would definitely buy it. And then they come to the Food Network and they have like children crying because they're in competition with each other. Shooting each other and shit. What you call you call this a pie? You know what I'm saying? You little piece of fucking like you like you need to quit the business. Like what the fuck is that? Stop it. It's like I cook with my grandma. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Your grandma doesn't know shit. Yeah, your grandmama to fucking taught you wrong. You fucking run. Exactly. I know. You you would be perfect. You're I the know. perfect friendly I, I will, host. I, will, I, am Papa, prob- I promise you. Papa, I let's go pitch you. that. All right. Because I could be the host. I could. I don't know we shit. We could do it together. Papa, that shit could work because we yeah. can get like a third person or whatever, how they had a pru or whatever. Yeah, we need like someone that. you be the funny person. Yes, and we'll then be the we, funny. Yeah, and then we they need, don't know that we're the master. Yeah, and then we need it. like two professional. Because yeah. you know about bread. Mm-hmm. You know. So when you're going around talking to the contestants, mm-hmm. me, I'm just going to be like, so what, you putting yeast? You like just... from an infection? <laughs> 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 yeah. Do you, do you eat bread? Do you go to a place and have a piece of bread and go, oh, this is dark? <laughs> <laughs> what, have, yeah. what have they done? Yeah, I really? do. I'm very You're snobby snob about bread. And then I ordered yep. from, uh, you know, Stanley's in the Valley, that place Stanley's. It's just familiar. like American kind of food. Sound nothing familiar. nothing like crazy, but really quality stuff. So anyway, just ordered like um, Uber Eats for, to got it the other day. And it came and they had s- s- sent some bread. And I was like, Phew. Yeah, look at this bread, and I bit it, and I was had the opposite effect. I was like, "Holy Ooh. shit, this is really good!" Wow, and I hid it. My I hid it from my family. <laughs> wow, dude's like, "Yeah, Dad, I love it." I think this is what bread's supposed to yeah. taste like, I was buddy. Like, Ooh, this is really yeah. good. Oh and, man, and, if I go to what? a if, go, ahead. go ahead, listen. Go ahead, baby. If I go to a steakhouse and the bread is bad, I'm done with that place. Lenny's yeah, like, I have dude. to have good. Lenny literally yeah. said once love to me, bread. "If I got thrown into jail and all they gave me was bread and water." Sign me up, baby. I'm in. Sign me up. <laughs> I'll stay. I'm good. He yeah. literally I'm good will be okay. 20. <laughs> you give me a t- Tom Papa bread every morning with a little oil and some yeah. water. Good. Oh. I'll Yo, do everybody stay. I'm going to be Trump's, honest. I, didn't, I don't think I really got into bread until I started doing SNL. I, well, I ate. I was trash eater. You know, you start eating good when you start making money. And yeah. they send you to these restaurants or whatever. And I really wasn't a bread person. And I don't know who it was I was sitting with. I think it was Keenan. And Keenan put some olive oil and Ugh. then he took that black stuff mm-hmm. and put it in yeah. there. And I was like, what you finna do with that? <laughs> and he took the bread and stuff and I was like, oh. I'm gonna tell you what I said. Oh, you white as fuck now. What the fuck is that white? <laughs> what is that white shit you doing? And he was like, "Why everything got to be white? Just fucking try it." Yeah, exactly. And I was like, "I don't eat all like that. That's just gonna be nasty." And he was like, "Fucking tr-. like him and Melissa McCarthy would look at me and go, "Fucking put it in your fucking mouth." <laughs> so like, I tried that shit and I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, that's yeah. a whole different level, different level yep. of fucking bread." Oh, and then you get you yeah you, know, you go all white and then you get like the the higher echelon olive oils. Yeah. Oh, yes. that that's shit's now, expensive. That's, now that's a different type of white for me. Yeah, man, that's it yeah. all tastes the same. <laughs> that's to me. yeah, that's not that's that white is so white it's confusing for my New Jersey white. Oh, <laughs> exactly. I go, my white doesn't even understand that white. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite bread? What is your favorite bread? Like when you is there a place that's your favorite and a type of bread that's your favorite? One of the places that I love in LA, there's Lodge Bread, there's Bub and Grandma's, and right next door here, Tartine. Never, I've never heard of none of these places. Tartine is right next door. Tartine. And they, yeah. the problem is they close at four, so I couldn't get in before. I was gonna actually bring you one of their breads. Wow. And, and it was you was gonna say it was yours? No, I wouldn't pass over, but I would show you one of my inspirations. These got this is like I hate to even give it to people because it's like they're the they are they are what started really? artisanal baking's revival in the U.S. Really, wow. that's how good they bread is. Oh my God! Comes oh, out I'm gonna have to come Francisco. early and get some of that shit. Wait, it is so give good. me a place in New York. What about New York? Because Lenny loves bread. Yeah, in oh. New York, Sullivan ba- Sullivan Street Bakery. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. There used down to be there. one across the street from the place that I moved to, 89th and mm-hmm. First. I cannot think of what this bakery is, but they used to have uh, yeah. a line around the corner. Oh, it's yeah. literally why I wrote uh, the UES song. Because I was like in the line and I was like, bitch, you know you white when you standing in the line to get some fucking bread. <laughs> yeah. What fucking life is you living right now? And it was, it, they closed down because they had been open all this. I mean, when I say they bread was motherfucking yeah. good. Oh, man. Yeah. There's another one uh, by the Soho Grand where I stay a lot when I go to New York. And uh, it's called Crispy Heaven. Ooh. And it's mm. uh, right around the corner from from uh, that hotel. That, that they have your great Lacey. bread, too. Gotta yeah, ask Lacey what that bread oh, is. They make this mortadella this and gouda sandwich. You Ooh. get their, like, little 
Ooh, uh, sourdough so little rolls or baguettes, and you yep. put this mortadelle and butter and gouda. Oh, man, it's so good. <laughs> so good. When mm. you did that show, you went to do all these bakeries and you tried all that food, all these little, yeah. t- their specialties. What what was a great one? And I know that you told me one time, not all of them were that great, but you always went, oh, it's so great. You could tell. My That's wife could tell it. when I was faking it. Oh, really? Yeah. When I, I couldn't I, you know, You want to encourage them, but I would really be honest and go off about how great something was. But if it was kind of like, okay, I was like, all right, mm. good for you. So nice meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> There was some oh, so weird if ones. it was bad, you wouldn't give them a bad oh, review? I, oh, thank you so much. This was so great being here. I love your city. Oh, I love so your nice. town. But, but you, that's I, what but, you're supposed to do, though. You, yeah, but you couldn't really be like, this is so amazing. But it was really <laughs> fun. And you know what? The great thing about it, I would drop into a city, New Orleans, Boston, whatever, and then you just go see these people that run these bakeries. They're all such great people. There's no yeah. assholes yeah. that yeah. get into baking. And start running bakeries. No, so I like really like carry a, them in my heart. I really do. Like Termini really Brothers in like, Philadelphia. I feel like you know these people because they was that's that they was that family. Yeah. And when I would come in, I really, they would not take my money. They'd be like, "No, you fucking." Yeah. They would give me. Oh man, they had this chocolate uh, cake loaf. Uh huh. And I would. I had to stop. I was like, "You're eating the whole cake. That's not. <laughs> that's not normal shit. You're not supposed to just eat the whole cake. Yeah, I know, but it you was can't just like it. the best fucking chocolate yeah. cake. It was the cookies, you the fall. black and whites. Is that what yeah. they call it? Shit. I mean, they had everything there. So I'm trying to you figure out. You fall in name love. Was. You fall in love. Oh my and, god. And they they come to my shows now. You know, like and and that was oh, only wow. we only shot like four of them or six of them. And. There's Something another, happened at the food. There's another one with an O. O O. It's O's. It starts with the O in um, New York. And I had it in my video in the US. Orwell. Oh, yeah. Is it Orwell's? It's, I don't, it or was washer. in my video. It was in my video. Mm. The the right. US video. It starts with the O and the Oshwash. Oshwash. Something uh, wash. Or wash. Or wash. Or wash? Yeah, I think that's what they're wash. Or wash. You know what's so funny, Leslie? When I'm describing the Soho Gram in the Crispy Heaven that's right around the corner. The thing that comes up in my mind, and I sent you a picture, I oh. think, when you had the Uber Eats yes. giant ad going into the Holland Tunnel, yes. it, you were right over the where picture. I'm talking about. And <laughs> I really, I have such a nice memory of being <laughs> in that you, spot and looking you, at oh, my I, friend. If I told you the history of that picture. Oh, can I it, ruin that I, for I, you? Yes, please, <laughs> please let me ruin that <laughs> for you. Can I ruin it for you? Go ahead. All right. Okay, so it's the end of a long day. They yeah. don't tell her that they're gonna shoot. This is at Frank Sinatra's <laughs> house. The fuck you I, Frank Sinatra's fuck you house. I. Yeah, Just Frank tell Sinatra's tell house. Everything. She's already mad at the at Frank Sinatra's house in Where? the valley. In the valley. In I, I in um, it was Frank Sinatra's. House. Oh, he lived in the valley. Yeah, it was a creepy yeah. house too. Sinatra yeah. lived in the valley. Some women got raped there. Yeah. Really. What? Anyway. And um, and so we're we're in this we're in the. <laughs> We're at this big house and they want to put her outside, but now the valley gets cold at night, right? So it's, it's like it was 50 the degrees. Time when that wind was really heavy. Uh-huh. And they got all, he's got like, you know, all those trees behind, all the topiaries behind him. So that uh-huh. it's a nice backdrop and they got the light floodlights out there, but it's cold. So they have two yeah. heaters there. She's already pissed. Uh-huh. It's been a long day <laughs> and she's going to give him 15 minutes to get this tell shot. Him, tell so him they, about the racist shit first. Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. There was some racist shit that this went on. This motherfucker like told me to they, buck my eyes. What? Yeah, do yeah. this. They wanted her to do this to to for, for whatever reason. And Andy I don't know. It? Yeah, I, buck your eyes more. He didn't know it. They were foreign. They didn't know what I to say, and they were bad at it. Whatever buck they were, eyes. he shouldn't have said Oof. it, right? That so she's mean, pissed I don't off. mean that it wasn't wrong. <laughs> they got to get this in for the contract. Fifteen minutes. Sinatra you get fifteen that. minutes. That's all she tells. She gets in there. They give her the floated uh-huh. whatever. She's smiling. Whatever she's yeah. smiling. Right. And I'm like, uh oh. I'm just. You can see it. It's like, <laughs> how many more? How many more? Right? So that uh, shot, I'm gonna show you, Tom, the shot that you saw yeah. on the going into the Lincoln Tunnel was like ah, like uh-huh. that. The next second of that is I'm fucking done. No, I <laughs> fuck you. Yo, fuck no, you. no, literally, <laughs> no, literally, literally, they were snapping while I was going off. You, you don't remember? Oh, yeah. You you had ran out there, so I had raised I'm the running. ice cream to go. What the fuck? <laughs> and they took that picture. That's what. That's that what they ended up using. <laughs> yeah, fucking asshole, motherfucker. It's I was so fucking shot. mad. I was so the fucking next shot mad. is unusable. Uh, it, it was, I was so fucking mad at that because that motherfucker. Because like, fuck, first of all, and and I hate to go into 
this whole thing of like, yeah. you don't believe a white motherfucker when they go back and say, hey, she said that you said Bucker. I, I didn't say that. Right. So he's still on the set. And I said, hey, I'm the fucking star. I am traumatized by this bitch ass motherfucker. Oof. Why the fuck is he still here? So he tries to come over. I said, if you come over here, I'm going to whoop your ass. No. I'm going to whoop your fucking ass. Like my, my, yeah, like Steve time. was ready to shoot him. <laughs> Steve was ready to, he was like, give me the word, I will shoot him. Oh my God. Like for real. Like he, he yeah. literally Holy had the audacity shit. to be like, oh, let me come. You come over here. Come over here after Not you just said that racist shit. I'm sorry. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. You triggered me, so that's the picture. Yeah. <laughs> I have such so, a warm feeling of yeah. that memory. Because so it was do that I, time but year, every, it was that whole we thing. Would go, we would go through the Lincoln and Tunnel. And you're to say, right? your eyes were perfect. <laughs> <laughs> they were full of rage. They were. They were, they were full of rage. <laughs> they were a little red. <laughs> they like, were a little red. <laughs> we like, would go through the Lincoln Tunnel, and I would laugh oh, every yeah. single time yeah. I made the laugh. People would send me that that's picture, hilarious. and I go, it's, they were like, it's got great pictures. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, I, I mean, no they, Uber did, they spread that shit everywhere. I was it was like, everywhere. Every time I would see it, I'd be like, yep. wow, it's wow. just like a trauma. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey, I see her. The people go, I see her Uber Eats commercial everywhere. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. There you do. Yep, okay, thanks. Uh, that was yep. great. Moving on. Holy shit. Well. Oh, it, it's it, fun. Crispy Heaven is a great bread place, and there's somebody else on that billboard now. I think it's a watch guy or something. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally different. I know Tom Papa Leslie for my whole yeah, career. I Literally, know. one of the first time oh, on shit. stage, like uh, one of the first or second time on stage in Ever. Stand Up New York, we were doing these pre shows, and right. you would close the pre show, and I'm like, this well. guy is a professional. <laughs> this guy's a professional. Not, we, we had no idea what we were doing. No idea. We had no, idea. <laughs> no clue. But you were great. You were great even Man, back then. The best. Like, well, well, wait, fun. you're burying the lead, though. What was the, what? What was the great, our greatest moment? Uh, the greatest moment we'll get to like 20 years later, you married me and my wife. That's the greatest moment. So y'all a throuple? I no, was his Tom. minister. Oh, okay. But the way you said he, it, you married. He, <laughs> he married <laughs> me folks. and my wife. He's, yeah. he's coming the out officiant. I was the officiant. So then you're not really married then. I was, yeah, I did do the paperwork. <laughs> Look I, at him, he's I, I ordained. But see, but this is not what people don't understand. I worked for the Justice of the Peace. You're already married as soon as you sign the marriage license. Yeah, that's what's that's so true. fucking stupid. I'd be like, then what the fuck is the wedding? For? Why are you, you're married. <laughs> that's half the ceremony inside of the office. Well, the way I run it is we don't sign until it's over. We go back into the oh, room. Oh, I don't do that. And then we did the no, signing that's not, after. That's, that's illegal. You can't do that. That's that's literally the most illegal thing you've ever said. No, there's so many things involved with a marriage license. Even if the if, even if you get the confidentiality once mm. where where you've been living together, yeah. they call it a confidentiality where you've lived together more than seven years. Uh-huh. You can come and sign something like that. Even that has to be stamped and, and looked at by the judge. So no. <laughs> Can you just so, tell him he would? She would read that thing with your lawfully wedded wife. You know. You okay, but I didn't know. Ahead, I didn't know. Him. I I didn't tell know. Him. Okay, I just thought I was being funny. <laughs> I, it's, okay, I didn't know what? that I wasn't supposed to say awfully wedded wife. Awfully, I, she missed. I thought she that's what they were saying. <laughs> and to the judge was like, uh, the judge was like listening to me one day, and he came over. He was like, "Are you saying awfully?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. He was like, are you not reading the paper? That doesn't say awfully. That says law. I was like, lawfully makes so much more sense. I was like, why would you say awfully in some vowels? That's terrible. How many did you, how many? Man, a lot. Area? And they all came back and annulled their marriage. Like everybody I married annulled. Because I worked in the annulment office too. Uh, Another the best. Another year and a half later, Leslie would have been there. It would have been great. Um, but yeah. but she missed it. Tom was amazing, and they still talk about it to this day, my wedding, that was for a, many that was reasons. A good time. One of them. I heard, I heard it was a you good were, thing. I, I wouldn't have came, good. though, because I would have been shitting on your whole wedding. Yeah, you wouldn't no, have liked it. I would have, oh, I would have did. It was in New I Jersey. Did, I would have, oh, I so would have shit. And, and I was like, yeah, we're in fucking Jersey. It's bad enough you was born in Long Island. This racist ass shit. What the fuck am I doing here? Why do I know white people? Like, the whole, I had the to whole speech would have been about me. Like, uh, yeah. When, uh, when did you meet Tom, Leslie? Yo, I don't know. Good question. <laughs> I don't know. Did we meet at? And the you're store? not on the shit list somehow. You're, I don't even understand no. that. You're one of ten people she likes. Thomas, I don't never remember. I think we met, we met in New the York. Laugh Factory. Laugh Factory. I don't. I know. I met you. I, all I, I remember know. is I think I saw you first, and then I was 
telling somebody, I was like, see, that's I want to be that type of funny because he's smart. Like, you see how he turns his jokes into like common sense. And and, I, and <laughs> yeah, and then I, I think I met and then you. I I don't think we knew knew each other. I think you were nice to me or something. Cause I, I like you, like you, Bill Burr, uh, Mark Mayer, all of them. I like people would try to talk to them. I'd be like, man, stop trying to talk to the new motherfuckers. Ain't trying mm-hmm. to talk to you. Like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, but I think I don't know when we met, but I think I feel like we fell in love. Like probably like. Only like six years ago. Yeah, because wasn't it after SNL or before SNL? Because I know I was with Eric a lot. It was too. after. It was after. It was after. I know it was after because while you were on SNL, I would look at, I would watch the Yankee games and see you with Lenny behind home plate. <laughs> and I didn't know you enough to be like, why didn't she give me those tickets? Yeah. And, and I <laughs> well, you, you get those tickets. <laughs> well, and I think that. I think that happened too. That I knew Lenny, and you was like, "Yeah, I know Lenny." It's, yeah, definitely. The, I just don't remember none of it. The Lenny of it was definitely a connector. Yeah, sure. oh, well, that's good. Oh, yeah. good. I'm glad I could do finally. But it's weird. Work something. We, it's weird we that we bonded on our own. We don't fucking need you. You're not. <laughs> I know. Anything. And it's weird that we're closer now. Jesus. Huh? Then it's weird that we're like closer. We're closer than me and Lenny. Yeah, yeah. and me and oh, Lenny. okay. Well, for, for, for in proximity for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and she's eating more of your bread than I have. And I'm very jealous. I'm very jealous. I can't even say. I brought but bread to Tom her house been... during a storm. Amazing. That's Amazing. right. Trees and down, power lines. I went to his house uh, during COVID. He didn't let me in, though. I oh, think no. It, I you think wouldn't even come in. You were so shit. covered up. Was, I didn't even know it was he you. Came out. He came out of the house, like of the whole house. That was and when you were really paranoid. Stair, and down the stairs. She was in a hazmat like, suit. He was like, <laughs> with a yeah. screen I was like, and oh. a bag he was like, yeah. and gloves. Yeah, like I got my kids in there. I don't want them to know that I know a black person. <laughs> there was no way to tell you were a black person. You were so covered from head to toe. I did. I had all kinds You were so you know, covered. I had a whole mask on the top. I was like scared, man. I was like, man, what the fuck? She like, really was. <laughs> like, the fuck is that? Everybody was scared. <laughs> we were wiping down packs. Packages. <laughs> That's right. I, was a, that I, I would was not early. touch my packages for like yeah. Yeah. three hours at least. You wouldn't do like, any of that, but you drive to my house to get bread. To get bread, <laughs> motherfucker. In, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sack. In a sack. I was like, and I was all looking in. I was like, so you got, and he was like, yeah, don't look inside my house, little black girl. <laughs> he does Tom, not live host- far from me at all. What? No, we, we're I close. know. He was very close. Tom has hosted, Tom has put me to work over the years, Leslie, more than, you know, you're the number one, of course, but Tom over the yes, years is sure. one of maybe four yeah. people in this business who's done something for me or like brought me along to do something. And one of the things, my favorite thing we ever did together, have, did you ever see the show, Leslie, called The Marriage Ref? Tom hosted Why a show called sound familiar? That does sound familiar to me. It's like 10 years ago. That sounds familiar. It's was so, it on yeah. like In 2010. NBC. NBC. Oh, it was on NBC. It was NBC. a real channel. NBC, okay. prime Seinfeld time. Made it. It was, Who? Seinfeld, Seinfeld yeah, made produced it. it. Oh, no. And, and it was just it was like Tom would, show. it was three celebrities well, coming I in with, and they would that. play, they would play clips of couples having a silly dispute over something. And Tom would be the referee. And I think I remember these. that. I don't think I ever watched it because I was like white. What? It, I did that to a lot the of shows. Funny. White. So white. White. To like white? I never watched Friends. There's we, no. We had all different first, colors on this show. Yeah. Well, yes. I didn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I was forced to watch Byron Allen's bullshit, <laughs> Comics Unleashed. Every time I saw this show and every time I said white, white comics, I knew, you white. know, I'm serious. Until I started doing a comedy store, I did not think that there was white comics that were funny. I thought, I thought Honest John was the only white comic that was funny. Who? Honest John. And y'all Ooh. don't even know who the fuck that is. No. Nope. Wow, that's fucked up. Honest John has been representing you motherfuckers on the other side for years. For fucking years. Sounds like a Re- traitor. No, no, seriously. <laughs> 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 Honest John did. Honest John was around doing the riots and he did a joke about Reginald Denny getting his ass whooped. Uh, One of the best. It made him famous. Really? With black people, I black guess. Black people, yeah. Obviously, yeah. wow. Pull up yeah. Honest John, please, so y'all can see this. I don't I like think Honest y'all... John coming over my marriage rep. There it is, right there. Oh, yeah, yeah that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that Honest guy. John is one of the nicest motherfuckers ever. What? I, I've never Yo, seen he guy. was in my travel group. He was in my... We. I've done so many shows with this dude. And he rips... He destroys... <laughs> he's still doing it? <laughs> no, but let me tell you, though, when I first started... 
the, him he had just started, he would bomb him. like a 747. But the thing about Honest is that he stuck to it. Yeah. He stuck with that shit and then just, it was like out of nowhere, this motherfucker just starts ripping. Wow. I can't Impressive. believe I don't know, honest. <laughs> no, so I was the I was the uh, I was the early Leslie. The I, I put I had uh, Lenny yeah, he put me on the marriage draft, and then we uh, he opened for one of my specials. I was like the the I was like Leslie without Mojo. I could only give you like certain <laughs> opportunities. Uh, well, you know That's, what's so weird? It was weird? fine. I loved it. It was so weird. It's, it wasn't a big deal as far as much as like because I'd already had came to the conclusion I was going to have a writer mm. and I wanted the writer to be someone different than me or someone outside of me. So it was going to be a man. Mm. I wasn't going to pick another black woman. I love my black women, mm. but I, they, we think alike. Sure. Um, and black men, sometimes That's we smart. do, but I, it, I still, you know, I wanted a, a masculine touch to it also, but like I tried a lot of people. And everybody wasn't understanding that it was a real job. Yeah. Nobody was taking it serious like that. It was like, oh, no, I'm just like, I need you to take it serious. Like, I want it. So when Lenny stepped up, Lenny, Lenny, when he, the first day that Lenny wrote my jokes down, I was like, we are a match. Right. We are a fucking match. Because half the time, I don't know half the shit I say on stage. Yeah. So he got me into <laughs> recording. He got me like, I didn't used to like to record because I felt like a jinx. I don't like carrying notes. Uh -huh. Yo, you would not believe the months it took him to convince me to take notes on stage. I was going to say. When he got me to take them on stage, I wouldn't use them. I would fold them up and put them back yeah. on the thing. <laughs> yeah. And then when I would come off stage, he would go, like, you know why that joke didn't work? And I would be like, why? He was like, because you didn't fucking say the fucking words on the fucking paper. So I, at some point, I was like, fuck. At some point, I would grab the paper and be like, fuck. Oh, I did forget that joke. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's uh, still a kind of a struggle because I hate looking at the list, but now I'll look at it more than yeah. I did before. Yeah. So Lenny was just like, when I discovered him, it was more of like, I can't believe that you don't already have this job. Like, I, like <laughs> it no. is weird because like I helped Very him, I helped weird. him out for years, and he never wrote me a single <laughs> joke, not even a tag. <laughs> Nothing. He wrote me like Nothing. seven. What? Jokes. I wrote, he wrote me like seven tags the first night I met him. Jeez, I, I never got a line from Lenny. I, that's not true because I riffed a bunch of stuff during the marriage draft as one of the things, and you got to use those bits that again. Count. <laughs> Come on! Ah! I want it for my act. I want to. I want to be as good as Honest John. Hilarious. One of the best writers in the business. Listen, no, this, this but is... I wanted you to tell. Wait, I want him to tell you the story in the marriage draft. We knew that Donald Trump was crazy oh, back then. He was on Over the marriage the draft as a guest. Oh, as, he's the worst he sat guest, right next of to course. Me. Right next to no me. No sense of humor. Yeah. And he, all the whole time, two things. When he first came in yeah. to the green room and stuff, you know, he was, he was impressive. He was tall. He was mm -hmm. suit, tie, everything. And all he was talking about was the ratings. We're going to do great ratings tonight. We're going to do great ratings tonight. <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. I'm glad I'm here. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to kill it in the ratings tonight. That's all he would talk about. And then yeah. when we were doing the show, you have like married couples and they, just tell you about their fights and then the panel talks yep. about who's right and wrong. And you would joke all about All he it. would joke about, all he would make jokes about was the woman's breasts. Ew, gross. He just kept making jokes about the women. And, <laughs> and then he would, he would do it sometimes quietly. Yeah. But anytime he would make a joke about the woman, he would look at me off camera and give me a wink. <laughs> oh, so gross. So weird. Oh. It was so weird. Wait, I'd say even weirder if I, and I'll jog your memory with this. Uh -huh. Of all the people, he wanted jokes written, right? He wanted jokes. Like, it was just uh, a I show where you that. show, they show the clip, and then they just talk riff. about, Everyone you know, riff. they riff. And it's just light and airy. Like, people, one likes the blinds open, one likes the blinds closed, right? Mm -hmm. And they were like, right? And Donald Trump would go, two things. He wanted jokes written, so he would have something funny to say. And we were like, Donald, that's not the that's not the show. <laughs> and the other thing I remember you telling me was that um he oh this was apparent on the show and they had to cut it a bunch of times because they would have to tell him at commercial, it's a light show. You're just joking because they would go one likes the blinds open, one likes the blinds closed, and he would go, I think they should get divorced. <laughs> Everything was I think they should get divorced. This couple clearly does not get along. Yeah. Just cut her off. It like was, he was so yeah. serious about ruining their marriage. God. He's insane. You know what's so <clears throat> what's so crazy is when he came to <laughs> SNL, everybody see everybody in New York was hip to Trump. Yeah. Like exactly. everybody knew. I yeah. didn't as far as I knew, he was the apprentice. 
Right. That's all I knew. When he came to, I, everybody was freaking out. And I was like, he's a fucking apprentice. Of course he's supposed to come. I'm mm-hmm. not thinking anything weird is going to happen. And me, automatically, as soon as that man met me, he was scared of me. Uh-huh. So, like, that's the fear that I put in the white man. <laughs> I wonder yeah. why. So, oh, no. Why? Like, oh, no, I, I, yeah. like, I was cool, but he knew not to fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Because, like, right. any sketches we was in, and he would try to change it, I'd be like, stop that shit. What the fuck you doing? You can't read? <laughs> I was like, what, you can't read? Like, that's the fucking car. Read what's on the fucking car. Like, so he would be like, oh, Leslie, she's... Well. So they wrote a whole sketch. <laughs> they wrote a whole sketch where it ended where I punched him in the face like I, I like he was fucking him and I would, I walked off the yeah. thing and punched and you could and he cut the sketch because he didn't want to get beat by a black woman uh, so I didn't I didn't all this thing I'm not uh, knowing this about this guy yeah yeah so you know everybody's like oh he sucks or whatever I was like yeah he's a fucking insecure piece of shit like I'm, he's just like the reg- all these white motherfuckers that I meet that y'all put on top of these pedestals that's he's a fuck yeah. when he walked into the table read he had all of his scripts uh huh in his hands like this. And his <laughs> hands were very small. Yeah. No, no, I've noticed it. No, seriously, yeah, I was, yeah. I'm not even fucking joking. That's the first thing it. I noticed. I was like, does he? Is his jacket too big or something? Because why does his hand look <laughs> so fucking small? And he looked like he couldn't, like he wasn't going to be able to read that shit. Uh-huh. Like it was just like, he looked like he was fucked up. Now, let me tell you the type oh. of person I am. And this is who I am. Uh-huh. I watched a lot of TV from when I was two years old. You just know the type. I just knew the cue to do. So I was like, when he sat down, when he sat down, you could tell the whole room is very intimidating. The, the sure. table read, the writers, everybody's there. He was, he's intimidated. Uh-huh. So he puts down, he puts down the papers and then he grabs his flip phone. Uh-huh. He flips it open and he goes... <laughs> Yeah, just get rid of it. Just sell it. Just sell it. Uh, and then he, closes, uh, then he closes it, right? And everybody uh, now, like again, I mm-hmm. white people know <laughs> white people. So mm-hmm. they had this passive aggressive of like, look at this fucking wozo. I felt bad for him. So I was like, how much money did you just make, Trump? How much money did you just make? And he goes, uh, it was a lot, Leslie. It was a lot. I gave him, ah, you know, you helped I him, helped yeah. him. And and because I didn't yeah. know that that's what we were doing. I even took a picture with him <laughs> on host the, the host dinner. I even had a red jacket on. Yeah. I didn't know. Well, I yeah, didn't know back nothing. Then. I didn't yeah. know about Democrats <laughs> blue and all. I had a red jacket on. This motherfucker grabbed me and took a picture with me. So uh-huh. so we were doing this sketch. We we're rehearsing the sketch. And everybody's coming and telling me shit that he's doing. And I was like, he's just a goofball. Just curse him out. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he's changing the the, the cue card. He like, and so I went out because uh, Lawrence sitting at the. He's not sitting. He's standing at the yeah. at the desk at the um. What do they call them? Them at them the people. podium. The no, um. The, people, the monitors. The people that go and get the stuff. The uh, PAs. The, yeah, them. They call yeah. them something else though. The whatever the, that. Oh, pages. the um. Pages. Pages. Yes. Pages, yeah, he's standing at the page desk. I remember this because he was doing. I don't, uh-huh. I don't know if he was ordering something on the phone, and I came out. And I was like, Yo, go get your fucking boy. He keeps changing the motherfucking cue cards. You know we got to go off of the fucking cards and shit. Tell him to fucking stop changing the fucking cue cards. We got to do that shit. He goes, oh, let me go talk to him. He's not president yet. And I was like, the fuck is you talking about? I said, I hope that's a fucking joke. And he was like, oh, shh, shh, dude. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it, 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 at that point, I was just like, yeah. it, it's when <laughs> I started kind of waking up in my head of going, oh, this is a whole fucking game. Because then later, Hillary... All of them are talking to each other. And this is before the election. They all know each other. Right, yeah. So I was just like, oh, wow, this is, this is, are y'all? And then I would ask Lauren all the time. I was like, you're making these political people. I know you're trying to get famous people in here to play people for the show or whatever. Uh But you're not, that's like, don't get Matt Dillon to play Brad Kavanaugh. He's a rapist. He's a fucking, like, you get Matt Damon. So they're sitting, yeah. And they're sitting in the fucking room with the Mm -hmm. ice in the fucking whiskey glass going, ah, you son of a bitch. They got Matt Damon to play you. (laughs) They don't give a fuck. Like, I was like, are you part of this shit? Like, even what they did to Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Warren, they even when Hillary, Kate had to play them crazy. I was like, why are you playing them crazy? They're not crazy women. Uh Like, I used to really go the fuck, because I was like, wait a minute, y'all can't, this is like people. Yeah. really are influenced by this shit. No, they made they made Sarah Palin like a, a palatable to oh people. Oh my god! They oh my god! Because yeah. you have someone stunning and and funny and beautiful like Tina play her, then everyone yep. transfers that love to that <laughs> exactly. person. Exactly. Like Daryl right. Hammond. Daryl Hammond was the one who was playing Trump before yeah. Alec Bowman came in. And if you've ever seen Daryl Hammond play Trump, uh-huh. he would not have won. 
Right. Do you understand me? Yeah, yeah, Daryl yeah, Hammond yeah. played him exactly who right. the fuck he was. The underbelly. Yeah, and I, oh, I was so mad. I was like, how the fuck you don't have Daryl Hammond playing this? Yeah. This, this, like, it was just like, I remember. Uh-huh. I remember this day, and I will never forget it. The day he got elected, and we had a table read, and Dave Chappelle was the guest. Everybody was wrecked at the table. Kate couldn't even fucking, Kate cried the whole mm-hmm. table read. In my head, I was like, these white people really take this shit serious. Look how... I was like, we didn't have shit presidents before. Like, we had Ronald Reagan. Even though you white motherfuckers worship him, black people were saying Reaganomics. He was fucked up to us. So, like, why y'all so surprised this mother... And in my head, because I still didn't know, he's saying he's going to make America great again. Doesn't that mean that he's going to bring Detroit back? Doesn't that mean he's going to bring farmers back? Like, that might be a good fucking thing. But I didn't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Uh-uh. He, he well, you know played now. us with Communications 101. <laughs> he played us with Communications well, 101. Yeah. And, and there was that thing when, when it was Saturday Night Live did it, uh, Fallon did it, CNN did it. They all embraced him because he was great for ratings, and they made him yeah. palatable to enough of yep. the middle. And I'm scared that that's what they're doing with Ron DeSantos. Ron and DeShittos. I'm try. Ron DeShittos. Yeah. And I'm the, yo, like, I'm coming in. Like, I, I keep telling <laughs> these motherfuckers, y'all better, listen, I am have no problem. Listen, I've had a good time in this career. It's been fun. I love making people <laughs> laugh. Do you understand me? But, like, this ain't my dream. My dream is to have a weed farm and a tractor and a fucking co- <laughs> corn cob and a shotgun. That's my real dream. So use me. I am Leslie Jones. I'm Leslie Jones. Everybody want to meet Leslie Jones. Make me some poison rings. <laughs> Let's That's take a picture, thing. fellas. <laughs> Let's take a picture, fellas. Assassin. I know. Assassin. I could be we... the best assassin. <laughs> yeah, you do have access. But don't <laughs> don't kill anyone before we make our bread show. Comedians can get close to anybody. I'm well, saying you um you've been close to a lot of famous people, Tom. Mm-hmm. Uh Jerry Seinfeld was a as a very confidant. A never thought confidant. about stabbing him with a knife. Stabbing but, him? Well, never thought, I mean, not once. Jerry ain't ruining the country. Yeah. I did a corporate gig and Giuliani was in the front row. No, Oof. you're going to be even, I'm about to really piss you off. And I think I was with Lenny when I said it. Oh, no. I think I was with Lacey. Because if I would have said that with Lenny, Lenny would have kicked my fucking ass. Mm. I Again, I don't know. When I moved to Brooklyn, Brooklyn was safe, and everybody kept saying it's safe because of what Giuliani, Giuliani did, yeah, right? Yeah. So when I saw him at the Yankee game, I literally <laughs> oh. said this to him, and mm-hmm. I'm very ashamed. But this well, is, no, this there is was the, two this versions the, of him. This is the two. This is the truth uh, that I am. I'm that type of person. I remember him shaking my hands. He's like, "Yeah, you the new girl," and I was like, "Man, let me tell you something, man." When I at 19, so and so, so and so, I was able to walk through Brooklyn because of some of the, the work you did. I think I'm just like, "Good job." Like mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't know what well, the that fuck was, I was yeah. doing or saying. No, he was, it was beloved awful. in New York. But and, and when I got with Lenny, time, and Lenny was like, that piece of shit. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was past when she should have known. Yeah. Yeah, it it's past, past when, when she should have yeah, known. Like, yeah, she, like know. right, right before he broke. I told him that. He and, was like, oh, God. I, I, you, I'm like, there's a new version of him showed up. Punch him in the face. Right, yeah. right. Oh, it was brutal. You was with me then. You was with me then, huh? No, I was at that game, but you we. You were sitting in that front row, That's and I just right. happened to go to the game. And Neil and I were about twenty rows back, and I'm watching it. Uh, and she's talking <laughs> to him. And I'm like, "What are and, you doing? And then, I'm texting, and what are Lenny, you doing?" So He's I take a, piece a picture. Of shit. The guy that was behind me, I think, flips off or something. I took a picture uh-huh. and I posted it. Five Ugh. minutes later, this motherfucker bends over and says, "Hey, can you erase that picture? Because, um, you know, I don't want it to like fuck up anything." I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. I was like, "What? What are you talking about?" I was like, first of all, I don't erase shit off of my page. Uh-huh. Second, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about?" And he literally tears. What the guy behind you? Yeah, he was with Giuliani. Oh, with Giuliani. Yeah, he tears. He didn't and he's like, be in the please, picture. I really, you might oh. fuck up my. You might, he was like, I'm not trying to, he was like, I've really, and I felt bad for the dude. I I erased it. I was like. (laughs) Weird. (laughs) So weird. But now knowing that that was some old, he wanted, he didn't, you you get what I'm, yeah, yeah, exactly. But it makes me mad because I'm not the person I I am now. I would have killed all of them. Yeah. (laughs) You ever, you ever watch Veep? Uh, Tom, sure. you know, like the, the bag man who stands behind her the whole time. The I, sometimes Tony I'm in her Hale. ear just going, yeah, Tony so Hale. And I just funny. I just sit there and go, 
He's a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> You're right, exactly. Don't do, that's my job now. Oh, uh, don't my do God. That's exactly what he does now. He goes, so yeah, funny. Don't, don't, don't talk to <laughs> And, and they always want to talk to me. They always come to him. He goes, they walk always the other fucking way. Toxic, don't toxic. Talk to fucking way. He's toxic. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I Tom, watch, I think you are so fucking funny, Tom. I watch your clips. Is. It's one of the, my favorite things to do is when I go through Instagram is when you have those comedy clips. Thank you, Leslie. They're so logical. But they're they're painstakingly hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. Like, let me tell you why so she loves simple. you. It means a lot. And let me tell you why I love you as well. You're when we it's rare, and Leslie will tell you this to find adults in the room, right? Yes. Not only that, so when you watch your comedy, yep. it's adults in the room, very mm -hmm. bright, very relatable to a family situation. You don't find a lot of comics like that anymore mm -hmm. that are doing no, it let me, at your level. You find a lot of weirdos with yep. weird fetishes and, you know, you know, some of our friends as yeah. well got some weird, they've been in trouble for a couple of things here and there, you know, whatever. Yeah. But you don't find the wholesome dad just living the dad life and doing that. So it's like, you know, I and appreciate making that it funny. and so she. And see, and this is another funny. reason why I, I fell in love with Lenny. I think, I think the very first conversation I had with him was so goddamn grown mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like I needed to explain anything mm -hmm. to him. I felt like he, I think there was a band I met. She was like, yeah, no. And I was just like, fuck, I'm, I'm in the room with a motherfucker <laughs> and he's older than me. So it was, yo, this is, I'm telling you right now, he has taught me the art of like my fuck shit. Like he, yeah. like, you know, the people that are around me know my fuck shit. If I'm acting a certain way or whatever, mm. like the first time I got into an argument with him, he said, you're acting like a fucking child. Call me back when you fucking not going to act. And, wow. I, and I remember thinking. Yo, I, he's not supposed to talk to me. <laughs> like, and then I had to think about what I did, and I was like, oh, no, he's not going to apologize because I am acting like a fucking child. Like, I'm the, even if I called him and said, no, you're a pot, he would have nah, I'm not going to fucking apologize to you and stop <laughs> acting like a fucking child. Like, it was like one of those, like, Okay, I like I like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh, I yeah. fucking like no, that. No, especially like, yeah, when you I become like famous that. and you don't. So, people don't have people yeah. like that in their life anymore. I love that because he'll tell me if I'm fucking up. Like he'll be like, "Are you fucking drunk, bitch?" No, <laughs> like you know, he'll do that. Like, yeah. like <laughs> so. Whenever I watch <laughs> your comedy, yeah, I feel like, God damn it, there's this one joke that you did, and I'm gonna tell you, I feel like it saved my life. You do this joke about how <laughs> everybody's like you, you're. Like you're old and you you're tired and you're a little nauseous and you in something about like you in your stomach you can't sleep. It was something that, and I was like, holy mm. shit! I thought I was the only motherfucker that was that that I was like, oh, so I'm getting no. That's what that is. Because when you said the nauseous part, I was like, yeah. I, anyway, I can feel nauseous for no fucking reason. Like what the fuck? So is that only for old people? <laughs> so ever since then, ever since I heard you, bro, I love your uh, shit. Thank you so much. It really, I, honestly, Leslie, when uh, when I when you've said that to me in the past, and it, it means a lot because in my mind, uh, until I heard that Uber Eats billboard story, <laughs> you're bigger than life, hilarious person, and uh, and for you to give me uh, uh, an endorsement like I that means it. a lot. Oh really man, man, I it's just like he's so calm. And then I met his daughters and I go, Oh my god, I wish my dad was this fucking like <laughs> like it, I, in other words, do you understand what I'm saying? That I feel like his daughter would call him and go, This fucking guy tried to do this to me last night or I, and have a yeah. without you going, Do you need me to kill him? Or how did you handle like you'll be like, How did you handle that? Do I need to come and help yeah. you? Woo, woo, woo. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, I'm going to come there and you fucking <laughs> stop dating. And da, 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 da. I don't know. If you know what I mean? No, absolutely. No, I think they know you more than I do. Lot. So I kind of I try not to press. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I'm like, let them let them be people. Yeah. But are they How even are they impressed now? by you, by your, by your comedy and stuff? Are they even impressed? I think a little bit. I think the older they get, the more impressive When they gets. see who you meet, though. Like, yeah, I, like, like your daughter was like, yeah, I want. Yeah, like to be like I really when I'm like this is my friend Leslie, it, like I get in the car with a little more street cred, you know what I mean? Like when they were little, <laughs> they didn't really care. They met Miley Cyrus once at the Tonight Show. That was a big one, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, they're uh, um, they're twenty and seventeen are... now. Oh my god! Yeah, you know, I think amazing. I met the twenty year old right 
when at the comedy club. Yeah, at the comedy she store. She was so fucking Incredible. cool. I was like, wow, yeah, yeah. you raised I a bet. cool ass daughter. Cool yeah. parents. I, but but I was just like, wow, y'all out together. Like my dad would never. <laughs> I, it's, what? Yeah. No. <laughs> my my dad was very much like grown people. Get your motherfucking ass in the room. Grown people talking. <laughs> right. The fuck. <laughs> yeah, and, and like I like I wonder. I'm pretty sure it'd be different. You know. Yeah. Say, different but, generation. But I just wonder. Would I like? Do you know how long it took me to tell my aunt that I smoked weed? Mm. Like it took me a long time. Like after I started, at, and I had been smoking for a while. And after I started at SNL, and I could afford to go back to Memphis, and I was staying in her house. Yeah, I was just like one night. I was just like, <laughs> and she was like, "What? What's up?" And I was like, "Man, I, I gotta tell you something about myself." <laughs> and she was like, "What?" And I was like, "I smoke weed." And she just started laughing. She was like, "I'm a drug enforcement agent." She, <laughs> she was. She was like, "I'm a drug enforcement agent." She said, "You think I don't smell you?" She <laughs> right. said, "You stink." All the time. She was like, you know what's so funny is that when I first started smelling it, I thought, is my baby not bathing? <laughs> like, does she know that she fucking stinks? She smells like shit. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah, yeah. weed smells like shit to people who don't smoke weed. Hilarious. And I was like, well, how long? She was like, I, she was like, forever I've known you smoke. <laughs> she said, you went to jail in, in, in New York. You remember for the dime sack? I was like... You knew about that? She said, I'm a drug <laughs> enforcement agent. Yes. But it was a big deal for you, like, to tell somebody, I, an I elder was like, in your family. Yeah, in my family. Yeah. So I was like, you mean I couldn't? She says, every time you come here, I always wonder, how are you smoking weed? So now I know when you're leaving with Purvis, my cousin Purvis, uh -huh. and, and Nisi and them, you're going to go smoke. Yes, I am. <laughs> she was like, I set something up in the in the garage for you to smoke. And I was like, well, uh, don't worry. I could just I could just walk outside. She's like, oh, in my neighborhood, you're going to walk around and smoke weed. Right. And then you're going to tell them that you're my niece, <laughs> right. the niece of a drug enforcement agent. What kind of, get your fucking ass in the garage and smoke What's a joint. What's wrong with you? Like, yo, it was one of, it was, I was, it was hilarious. My aunt was like, you, you late. Yeah. No, I my Tom, daughter my daughter's yeah, yeah, go ahead, sir. I'm sure they have secrets. I didn't I found out my <laughs> I put in my new special that my daughter was smoking weed all through high school. I had no idea. That is really yeah. kinda cool. Wow. No idea. No idea. And That's I like smoked my whole life. Like I I should have been hip to it. No and clue. No in the clue. house. No idea. Are you in the but house? But you know people who Did smoke weed out. can't smell weed. I can't smell weed. Yeah. I can't. People, I'll have it out and I'll be like, how did you bust me? They'll be like, you don't smell that shit? <laughs> yeah. Like my sister. Yo, <laughs> wait, you remember Angie, my uh. sister. So we was in that little office, you know, that little office. Me and Keenan was in there yeah. blowing that bitch up. I'm talking about like <laughs> it was smoky as fuck. So Angie was sitting in the chair and Angie stood up and she said, listen, I got to go the fuck out. <laughs> Y'all, yeah. I'm this shit is. Christina said the first time she worked for me, you know, she worked, she did a show and me and Keenan had the, uh, the office smoked up. She said she went yeah. home and her mother was like, because she's Spanish, she's Spanish mom. She was like, God, well, that make out. Like, oh, what is that? I smell on you. <laughs> she was like, get used to it, mom. Get used to it, mom, because this girl smokes a I lot come, my of boss. fucking weed. I, I come back from L.A., I got to. I gotta wash everything in my suitcase. I didn't, suitcase. See, and I didn't know that. I gotta I wash the suitcase. The I don't suitcase. be smelling nothing. No. And I'll, I'll be wondering, like, uh, you know, a fireman came to our house once. It was an accident. <laughs> I don't know why. It came. It was something. And I opened up the yeah. door, and I was like, "Oh, what's up, man? You scared the shit out of me." He was like, "Oh, I, I can see why I would." I said, "You a fireman? <laughs> you a fireman? What the fuck you want? Like, don't, don't get rude in my front door, bitch. What you don't think this my house? Yeah." Bitch. I'm so upset. <laughs> Weed makes me uh, moody now. Really? Like the next day, really? I get like. You don't smoke day, enough. I get lethargic. I get. No, nah, like, you got to smoke enough to keep the, to, to burn that out. Yeah. <laughs> when I smoke don't again. smoke, I get right. fucking moody. That's what it is. I'm not right. I'm stop. Right. I do it. Nah, and stop. I have, I have to get up in the morning I, and it's and I don't care. I, I know it. My aunt called me a pothead. And as long as my aunt knows, I don't give a fuck about nobody yeah. else. So <laughs> my aunt is like, I get up. I smoke my joint. I have my cup of tea. Really? I lived with Rastafarians. I learned yeah. how to do that. Like, mm -hmm. Rastafarians, like, weed tea is the best thing to drink in the morning because it opens up your stomach and all of that. So I get up in the morning. I have my joint. I smoke my tea. Uh -huh. I mean, I'll drink my tea. And uh, 
Really? Yeah. And then just like I love it because I'm older now and I got money so I can do what the fuck I want. Before now, right. when I was at SNL, I couldn't I could smoke at home, but I would usually go in and smoke. But I have to smoke in the morning, son, to yeah. become a regular person. Because if, if I don't, like, I'll even if I do it, I was I keep playing with it. Mm hmm. Because I, you know, did it forever, and now it's legal, and it's everywhere, and I'm like, I should be having fun. Yeah. So I, like, they dropped it earlier in the that. day. Like, I'll do it, like, around 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and thinking, like, well, then I'll, I won't be high. I'll go to sleep and wake up, and that next morning, 10 o'clock, I'm just sitting at my desk, like, yeah, like a little oh, head, what's a little the point? Week. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm seeing emails. I'm I'm not yeah. answering phone calls. <laughs> no, I'm just it like, does, yeah. See, see, it does make you not a morning person. Yeah, you know, sucks. when I was in college, I was uh, studying to, to be drug enforcement agent, also because my aunt was one. And I remember taking this uh, substance abuse class, but I didn't know what the real thing. Well, I didn't give a fuck about that class. I would show up to that class drunk as fuck. I would be so drunk. <laughs> Because it was right after basketball practice. And after basketball practice, we used to get faded. We would get That's faded. At so least would, a B minus right there. Yo, yeah. so I would fucking sit. I would sit in the back and I would sit way up so he wouldn't see me that I was fucked up. And man, I'd be wasted just sitting in the chair just. And I got everything right. right. Like he would ask a question. And I'd be like, that's the pattern up. The th 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 th. And he was like, how the fuck? So one day after class, he was like, hey, can I talk to you? So in my head, I was like, he's going to tell me I'm one of his dopest students because uh -huh. I know all the answers. Uh -huh. So he goes, he goes, hey, you know, this is a substance abuse class, right? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, well, then why are you coming to class drunk like that? Uh, and I was like, because I, like I like to drink. <laughs> and he was like, why? Why do you like to drink? This is substance abuse class. And I was like, well, you'll be happy to know I'd like to smoke a joint too sometimes once in a while. <laughs> and he was like, why? I was like, because I like to be high. <laughs> And then he was like, yo, we Such need to, answer. this is a, this is a <laughs> yeah. substance abuse class. We yeah. need to figure that out. You can't be a drug enforcement agent if you're substance abusing. I said, well, who would know more about the substance <laughs> than the motherfucker who's abusing? <laughs> you say you're right to logic class. Yeah, so he went, he went and told my philosophy. coach. philosophy. Get out of my class. He went and told my fucking coach. He went, he did. He went and told my coach because he said I wasn't going to tell the coach. He was like, yeah, don't tell my coach. Don't be a snitch. <laughs> yeah. So he went and told my coach and I hated that motherfucker. Uh, After I would come into class and I'd be like sitting at the top like, and he would ask a question I'd be like, <laughs> I'm sober. <laughs> and the answer is so and so so. <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah, she like, turned it oh into a 12-step <laughs> program. Uh, that shit was funny. <laughs> I remember that shit. I don't like that weed makes me moody. Tom Papa, the new I don't Netflix like that special it makes you is titled. I don't like that either. I'm going to have to help you do that. Let's ask I him about his special. Tom Papa, what a day. What is this? This is like number five of the specials. Five, yeah. And all of them are and so good. I literally sat and good. watched like two of his specials in a row and I was just like, God damn, this is so funny. Excited what a for day. this one. Are you excited, excited about it? Excited for this one. Yeah, it came out. It's out. It's out. It's, uh, it's out. on Netflix. Yeah. It's out. I have it in People my queue. Dig it. Yeah. I'm, awesome. Uh, I'm happy. And, then, and I'm happy to move what? on too. I'm happy to like yeah, uh, be on tour like right that. now, like doing. It's like that. Yeah, it's fun. New stuff. It's free. You, and what about. Free. You remember when we used to have the established material, right? And yeah. you felt so comfortable in it because it was our shit. Yeah. And then when you become famous, that goes away. Right. Right. That goes away. That comfort now is yeah. uh, kind of bad for you. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. The first, the first special I did, Problem Child, I did material I had been doing for 20 years. Yeah. And to sit and have to write new shit, I was like, oh shit, am I going to be able to do You're it? Vulnerable again. You have to put yourself yeah. in that place. And that's when you really realize you're a comedian. Yeah. That's right. Yep. I'm, I know. Because now What's like, the book? I'm nervous. Tell me about the book. Can this is my third book? book. It's called We're All in This Together, So Make Some Room. And it comes out on uh, June 6th. You can get it pre-order right now. What Are is it about? Are these essays or self-help? Comedic essays. <laughs> comedic essays about, about life. What, that you've written or other comics? That I've written. What do you mean comedic essays? Uh, they're like five, six pages each, just about different subjects about life. You know? I want to know. What, so what is it? Like, give me an example. Um, uh, like I write about, um, the, the, the basis of this book is that you're not unique. Mm. You think you're the first one to go through everything in life. And I say, how many times mm. I say it? And everyone's done it before you. Even so there's like a whole essay about just walking through CVS. You walk through CVS and you think you're the only one that has this weird thing on your foot. 
there's a whole section section (laughs) for people dealing with shit on their feet. And then you go to the next aisle and there's more stuff. Everybody's been dealing with this stuff since the beginning of time. Sweet oil. My ear was itching. It's always itching. I'm sticking uh-huh. in my fucking ear. Like, then I was like, something's wrong. Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah. And I was talking to my aunt. And she was like, go to the store and get some sweet oil. Uh-huh. And I was like, the fuck is sweet oil? She was like, you put it in your ear. It stops it from itching. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so I go to the drugstore. I was like, there's no such thing as sweet oil. Yeah. Sweet oil right up in there. And do you know what it is? You're not. You're going to. This is even going to kill you crazy. It's olive oil. Is it really? That they didn't put into a jar and put a fucking label ah, on it. So I just started using olive oil. Of course, yeah. yeah. yeah of course. You could have had a good so bread least... and then put it in your ear. <laughs> bread in one ear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so anything. And also, you can learn. So you can learn from history. You can learn from everybody that's ever walked this earth. Dumb people that's making right. mistakes or smart people doing it right. And it's just all essays on how I've observed all of that. I wish people that all the time. Would understand. What, do you want to be dumb or so yeah, smart? Yeah, but I wish people yeah. would understand that the mistakes are lessons too. Like that's when, when you when that's when you know you've grown when you learn from your mistakes. Like that is a real like when you I tell people all the time, you cooking popcorn, you burn popcorn. What do you do? You start over. And then you don't do what you did the time before. <laughs> right, that's Am right. I correct? Yeah. 100%. That's life. Yeah. And it's even better when you watch someone else burn it, and then you don't have to. <laughs> Absolutely. fucking moodly. Yeah. Damn, respect yeah. the fucking growth. Yeah. <laughs> See, that only, a grown, this only a grown yes. motherfucker could have said that yes. shit. Only a grown person could have said that. I would have never even thought somebody else burning the goddamn popcorn I could learn from them. Shit. That's why, why I'm Tom here. Pop is the best. That's yeah, why. The Tom best. Pop is a normal <laughs> so grown. guy. Look, look, the yes. kids don't understand Romance. nothing we say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom, kids. thank you so much for this coming. This was really in. fun. Thanks for having man, me. Tom, oh, oh, man, Tom. I wish you all the best. I'm looking forward to this. Anything you yes. want to talk to us about? Uh, no, I just, <laughs> I just want to make sure that, uh, that I look good on camera. Just don't use me to look great. weird angles or anything. I mean, you look all right. Yeah. <laughs> you look great. You're always doing great. Is there one thing that you want in this business? You've done everything. All the specials, the books. Hanging out with Seinfeld, but uh, everything, movies, the what is there one thing that you want more than anything? Is there one thing? That... I, uh, the two things that I haven't done, I haven't made my own film, mm. and I haven't successfully run my own uh, show, TV show. Like a sitcom? Would and you I... want to be in a sitcom? Yeah. And you know, the games change. So, mm-hmm. like, mm. To get a sitcom sometimes isn't great. Takes no, you off the right. road. Takes we you. We just learned that lesson, sir. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> but it was. But you know, same as you watching TV since I was two. That still is a lingering thing. I've got one in development right now. And all thing you got to do is follow the look. Abbott Elementary. Mm-hmm. They're not doing nothing special on there. It's just really good actors really good writing they're hitting all the formulas yeah. in a nice and refreshing way so much of it is you cast great people you you need great characters that you want that you know and love and want to see over and over again and give them exactly. their lines and give them yep that's like it's and almost Leslie hard at this, are, it's uh, almost hard at the stage when you come up with the idea and you're writing the pilot because it's like this is all structure but if someone walks in the room and they are you want them and they make you laugh you should change the whole script and put that character in your show mm-hmm. so you say it all the fucking time yeah so yeah. that so and that even though i know and but the thing is even if you get it it could like for a comedian that can have your own podcast and have all this freedom it's it's uh, it's not it, it's not like what it used to be yeah it's not but I still like the artistic part of it, of telling a family story like that way or through a film. So those two things always are a lingering. I think it's coming back. I think it's I coming think back. It's coming. I think it's coming oh. back because people are ready to watch scripted. I, literally this weekend, I watched every uh, so many scripted shows yeah. and was like, fuck, oh my God, Poker Face. Yeah. One of the best things I've ever watched in my fucking, I mean, so fucking Can good. Can I ask you a question though? Uh, just a creative question and this might be, be better for off air, but uh, multicam or single cam, like S- single I have cam. To, yeah, see now that is something has to be explained to me because <laughs> SNL is multicam, ain't it? Because it's a gang of yes. cameras in there, and okay, there's, uh-huh. and there's people laughing. Yeah, I like that. 
I like when the audience is in there. I like the audience, studio audience thing. Yeah. But I also like loot. I also like the yeah. Ted the Ted Lasso type right, exactly. shit, too. I so know. They're both there. I don't know. Is that single cam, the Ted That's Lasso? That's single cam, number? yeah. Yes. Anything with it, like Abbott Elementary, single cam. It's, oh, my God. Anything in front of the audience the where you hear the laughter. That kills me on Abbott Elementary. Jesus, it's my fast. Like, please let me be a guest on there so I can get the chance to look at the camera. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. There <laughs> I mean, was they're doing one, the office. They're yo, doing the, yeah. when they, there's this one, it's, <laughs> and I'm talking about, I had to pause it and I laughed for 15 <laughs> minutes. The, and it was a simple fireman because I go off face. That's yeah. my favorite thing is face. <laughs> and she comes out, she wants to see this big fire engine. And she was like, wow, what a nice, big, hunk <laughs> of fire truck. And the fireman thought she was talking about him. So he goes, huh? And then she goes, fire truck. And, and then he looks at the camera and go. <laughs> and I, I, I said, what a wonderful yeah. thing that that guy got to do. Yeah, exactly. Why, that take. It's, it, people don't see, like I said, since yeah. two. The, the, the fucking comedy thing mm-hmm. will never die if you do it right. Yeah. The, this is one of the best, That's the best the answer. fucking compliment that I just got from that article. Leslie goes for the joke and does not give a fuck what she looks like. In, in, mm-hmm. af, and that is the ultimate... Yeah. Oh, that's the that's the compliment I give Carol Burnett. That's the compliment yeah. I give Lucille Ball. That's yeah. all I've ever wanted to do. Yeah. I think that's ultimately that's pr- probably the answer. Take your programming aside. If you do it great, it doesn't matter if it's single or if it's multi. Right. Like if you do right. it great. I mean, look at everybody that's watching. My wife brought it up the other day because I've been thinking about it. How many people are just downloading and watching every Friends, every Seinfeld, those are all yep. multicams. I mean, you know what yep. I mean. Even though there was no fucking black so people, well. uh, even though they lived in the middle of fucking New York and not even a black cab driver, whatever. Well. But yeah, <laughs> the, I I get it. No, I yeah. get it. Like I can't. Reba, don't yeah. laugh. <laughs> right? Reba shit was good, and they hit some hard. Her daughter was a teenage pregnant girl, and her husband lived next door yeah. with the girl that she was. He had enough. <laughs> that shit was like, man, that shit was good. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I guess it's just quality. Well, you then, do it right. too, okay, don't yeah. laugh, but, like, some episodes of All in the Family, yeah, I knew he was a racist, but it was right there. Yeah. And then we had George Jefferson coming in and mm-hmm. going, honky, honky, honky. Yeah. They don't even do that. That's why we can't, like, I tell this to Lenny all the time, if if this this country could live its truth, like, live your truth, arrest the president. <laughs> Arrest the president. Live your truth. We will be the bombest country if we lived our truth. Yeah. Yes, we've had racist shit happen. (laughs) No, we've sold people here. No, we've done... Live these fucking truths because that will make us a better fucking future. Instead of sweeping it under the rug and not talking about it. When you think about good times, good times, Jefferson's, all in the family, and and then you have to get all the way to blackish. You have, you have like yep. a thirty and, but, and year even, void, and I, I hate to say it, and I love, I love that, I love that, but it, even it doesn't get to really touch to get the, as deep into the it. way those. Like if you look at good times, that man, I don't know who it was. I was watching, uh, it was a good times marathon, and somebody who had never watched it, and they was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> they had this on TV." <laughs> I know, I know. Like it was so, yeah. like some heavy shit. Yeah. man, I remember I the episode of James. <laughs> fucking whooping the kid. Yeah. I remember that shit because every black body, every black person was like, yep, that's <laughs> what about to happen to you, boy. Yeah. You about to get your ass whooped. Yeah. Like, and, I just, And how I great know. that we were all watching it. Everybody. You know? Everybody. Yep. Yeah. White people, black yeah. everybody was watching. Everybody watched yeah. Fred Sanford and, and talked about Julio. You know why? That was, was the first time I ever saw a Spanish person. Part of why it goes away <laughs> is because there's very few people that could pull that off. That could really make it. That say, wait a minute, God damn it! Hold on, <laughs> say that again, Tom, for the motherfucking fake ass people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> there are very few people that could pull that off and make shows be that elegant in making those shows. It's we act like it should just just you should just do it. There's not that many people around. And we around give that can it, do and it. we yeah. give it, we give it to people that we think can do it, and then the networks fucking whitewash it or fucking strip it of everything that it was yeah. so it never comes out to where yeah. that's why we're so impressed with people like us or me because oh wow she keeps it real or she did that yeah I don't let people censor me yeah which is unfortunate because there's no way we're gonna get that bread show made now 
Oh no, we're gonna not only are we not only are we gonna get the bread show made, it's gonna be one of the most popular shows ever. This bread I'm, sucks, son. I'm, li- I'm literally gonna be like, yo, this bread tastes not like this like Tom. This bread tastes funny. Yeah, this is ass. Why bread. why does it taste so this salty? Tastes like, like ass. It tastes like bacon soda. Why the fuck this shit tastes like bacon soda? Like like I wanna ass be the sound of cow of the of the bridge. No, you're going back yeah. to being mean. We gotta be nice. We gotta be British nice, Bake Off. Nice. You be oh, like, that's Tom, right. Seems a little salty, yes? Okay, but think about it. Paul <laughs> yes, Hollywood, Leslie. Paul, they scared of fucking Paul Hollywood. Yeah. But Paul got... Hollywood comes around and he gives him that look. Mm. Say, mm. I want to be the handshake bitch. Mm. Mm. And, and I won't give a handshake though. I'm going to do high for all, oh, homie. Oh, she gave you. She, she gave uh, you a fist bump. Oh, homie, I'm going to go make bite. a sandwich out of this shit right now. <laughs> like, bring me some jelly and some butter. I'm going to fuck this We got to get this show off the ground for sure. It yeah. sounds like a we great show. We should tell show. Lenny will do it. Lenny, you do it. You do that Lenny stuff. will write it. Yeah, he'll write it. You All right, sure. Let's he really it. will, though. Let's do it. I love anything with bread. As long as we can make bread and eat bread, that'd be great. Tom, you're, you're the king of bread. You guys are the best. One of the best. Love you both. Business. Thank you so much. Man, you was the fucking shit, Tom. All right. We'll be right back. We're going to play a quiz with Tom Papa right after this. Welcome back to the show, everybody. This week, we're switching up a little bit. Instead of listener letters, we're going to play the game. But please send us your email letters and recorded voicemails to fuckerypodcast at gmail.com. That's F-C-K-R-Y podcast at gmail.com. If you record yourself, don't forget to use a fake name or your business is going to be out there. Okay, Judith and Jordan are going to keep score. This is Tom against Leslie. The first one to weigh in gets a point. We'll do 15 questions. And all it is is a 19. What the fuck? 15. They're going to go fast. It's going to go fast. Do we just blurt out the answers or is there a buzzer? You can blurt out the answer. You don't have to wait. If I have so to give you hints, I'll give you a multiple Duran, choice. Duran. Just blurt it out. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's 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 go. 80s quiz. That's all you got to keep in mind. Okay. Number one. Which former actor was president of the United States for most Ronald of the Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Bang. I go with Papa there, Judith. Fuck off. Number two. What dividing wall in Germany was torn Berlin down wall. in 1989? Ooh, two nothing Papa. Hey, listen. Come do on, you want to keep working for me, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> My what brain 1980s? Fast. Number three. What 1980s sitcom featured a setting in a bar where everyone knows Cheers! your name? Ooh, that was a tie, I think. Judith, I, what I do give, you think? I'll give it to her. Yeah. Yes, All right. Because right, Judith like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Feels bad for you. What number four? What doll brand featured fabric dolls that inspired Cabbage other Patch. toys games? Raggedy Ann. Even... Ooh, yes. Cabbage Patch is correct. Nice. <sighs> I went to the 70s. Tie game. What popular movie series featured a time traveling DeLorean? Back to DeLorean. <laughs> Back to the future. <laughs> oh, Leslie. <laughs> Back to DeLorean. I was going to say DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the future. <sighs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> Number six. What video game console signaled the boom in video Pac-Man. game popularity? No, Atari. No. What? Nope. I will give you a. I'll Wait give a minute. You a, signaled um, the boom? What video game console? Oh, console. S- console. Signal the boom in video game popularity. I'm it's gonna give you Atari? a choice. Is right. Nintendo. Uh, no, here we go. Wait. I'm gonna give you. Well, Sega. Hold on. Here we. <sighs> I'm gonna give it to you. Ready, <laughs> Leslie? Get ready. <laughs> Apple. Apple Pippin. Microsoft Xbox. Sony Walkman or Nintendo Entertainment. Nintendo. System. There you go. I Number had it seven, right first what? anyway, motherfucker. Well, you kept yelling shit over you me. Know what? what? Number seven. Fuck what man. what disease was discovered in 1981 that led Eight. to a worldwide campaign? Yes. Oh, Leslie's making a comeback. Measles. Number eight. Which space shuttle exploded in flight and grounded NASA missions for Freedom. more than two Challenger. Years? Challenger is <laughs> I knew correct. Was, I was Judith, say I 13. hope you're keeping track. Apollo Number 13. nine. <laughs> <laughs> what 1986 <laughs> nuclear disaster led to the evacuation Chernobyl. of an entire city? Three yes. Mile Island. That happened no, in Chernobyl's 86? correct. Mm. Yeah. Really? I Number thought 10. that was like in 1960s or something. Okay. Great. All right, Leslie, pay attention. What? Fuck off, which man. of the following the dance teacher. moves was pre- <laughs> Come on, which of the following dance moves was performed first by Break Michael dancing. Jackson? So the moonwalk. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Number 11. <laughs> Finish the slogan from Wendy's restaurants. Where's, Where's the, the beef? beef? Ooh, Judith, you got that? That old bitch. Right. She's still alive. No. That bitch Number 12. No, dead. she's long dead. Dead, she dead like 19 She's racist too. She? Dead. What gadget would you least likely to listen to music in the 1980s? 
Sony Walkman, iPod, CD iPod. player, iPod. boombox. Yep, I think that's right. Tom might have got in. Okay, it's okay. Number thirteen. Just, this popular toy. This popular toy was difficult three D combination puzzle. Oh, the Rubik's, Rubik's cube. cube. <sighs> Ooh, that's We're close. Like soulmates. Tie. <laughs> Number fourteen. What popular toy was often was kicked around for fun and games? A uh, soccer ball. <laughs> kicked around. Number, kicked around. Kicked around. Nerf. Rubber ball band. Marbles. Hacky sack. Hacky King sack. Cuts. Are we tying that one? Okay. Last one. Fifteen. What children's <laughs> book series featured colors? Colored in illustrations and hidden characters Where's Waldo? with red and white stripes. Where's oh, Waldo's Where's correct? Waldo? You know, the reason Go I on. didn't get that is because you read the question so fucking slow and <laughs> monotically nerdy that I couldn't okay. fucking... You Tom got distracted by his delivery. <laughs> Motherfucker. All right, what's the score? <laughs> I think we tied. We tied this. everything. <gasps> what? Put that in your nice. cabbage patch. White people. White Put people. that in your White cabbage patch. And I feel smoke like it. now that you and Lenny was trying to do something against the black. Man. Why is it always? <laughs> because have that's to what be... I'm gonna always use the race card every time, every fucking time. I don't know why y'all ask why? black people that. I don't know uh... why you do that. We're gonna always use it. <laughs> yep. Well, <laughs> a win's a win. A race. Yeah. <laughs> She'll win that game every time. I can't beat her at that game. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom, thank you so much for coming. Love that you guys. That was a blast. Tom, you were so the great Tom soon. Papa, everybody. We'll Man, be right back with the fuckery picture. of the week. That was amazing. Thanks to Tom Papa for coming on the show. So and fun. now it's time for the fuckery of the week. Fuckery of the week. <laughs> you gonna go first this time, Les? Yes, I'm going first. Okay, so uh, I was I was uh, watching nine one one Lone Star, and mm. uh, she was taking a nine one one call, and there was a little boy that was calling in because he wanted to not miss the pizza party. He wanted he 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 was like he the way he called in he was like oh my god I'm stuck on these tables and so the girl was like oh my god it's an emergency this little boy is stuck in a table so because he's saying tables and then it comes out that it's timetables like he he he's calling into nine one one to get some help with multiplication mm. so mm. you know uh so she you know I what the way that she handled it was so beautiful it wasn't like she she told him like like this is not where you're supposed to call in for that type of emergency and then the little boy was like please help because like i i want to be able to go to the pizza party and this is really hard can you please help now uh-huh. i thought to myself what a fucking like there should be a section that they send that call to or that do you get what i'm saying like no one i was thinking about this i said and I'm going to I'm going to say it like I wrote it cuz I wrote it right at that minute. There are so many jobs that we could fill. There should be no unemployment in this country. Uh like like there sh- there should be a uh, a mental health uh uh people in certain sections. Like there's so many jobs. I I see so many things that can be done by people like you just have to recreate of what that is or rename Something right. like this. There's like we're supposed to be so much mm-hmm. advanced. There's so many jobs, but we have no money, or we or we do it. Uh, we do it, and it's go. Or we do have money, and it's going to the wrong place. When will we admit to ourselves our system is fucked up? When will we be brave enough to go through the uncomfortable work of fixing it? All I hear is, well, they go this, they do this. This is how it goes, and this and that, and then we can't fight it. That's bullshit. If these yahoos are just making the right moves at the right time, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're smart. That doesn't mean that their system is unfixable. You mean to tell me we can't outsmart these fucking stupid fucking assholes? Because that's what they are. That And they know that they're stupid. They know that they're stupid and they know that they're getting away with it because we are fucking lazy. Like, 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 why do you think they are fighting so hard now? Because we're finally looking at their shit. We're finally paying attention to some of their shit. That's why they're fighting so hard to cover up their shit. They're trying to take out AP. They're trying to so take women's rights. They're trying to take vote. They know now we're starting to catch on. The only reason they have gotten away with what they've gotten with is because of our complacent laziness. 
That's why they're getting away with everything. Because nobody wants to fucking do the uncomfortable thing of standing in the line and voting. Or fucking standing up against a motherfucker you know is wrong. I used to watch disaster movies and would be like, how the fuck did they get to this point? How did they get here? And I believe it's never the actual disaster that destroys us. It's the decisions we make after that disaster happens and in reaction to that disaster. That's when our decisions are, 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 are terrible. And, and we're making decisions now that is going to shape an awful future if we don't stop it. You're not telling me Elon Musk is not the, the dude the Terminator is supposed to come back and kill. You're not telling me that. <laughs> Think if someone else will fix it. This is it's, this is what we've been fuck, fucking. We we just we're blind. This is a start at the root problem, and we will not win that. We will not beat that shit until we fucking do it together. We have like the the. I get it. There's fucking look. I put it on my page all the time. But the reason I put that there's racism because we need to start looking at our problems and stop acting like they're not problems. Everybody wants to look like they're so good. You want to look like you're so righteous. You're not. Everybody has a bad side. Everybody has a good side. We need to come together as a fucking nation and fix these fucking problems. The babbling and the fighting between each other and letting crazy folks instigate the fuck shit that's going on. We are going down. USA is Titanic right now. It's Titanic and we're approaching the iceberg. When are we going to stop the boat? Did I make sense? I never know if I make yes. sense. No, it makes sense. I mean, look, complacency is what's killing us. It's right out there. Like you always said, it's right. It's so obvious right now. And everybody like I have to say, if you listen to today's show, what you realize was you can if people ha can come a long way. You didn't know who Donald Trump was. You got a full education in the last six years. Who knows if you voted before, but you're certainly going to vote now. And I think a lot of people went through a lot of that stuff, catharsis, and it's right in front of you. And I think more people need to go through that in real time to understand, you know, they should have gotten this education right. of what's right and wrong and what we need to do to save democracy. Because the alternative, they don't even understand how bad that is, but they should have got a taste of it. And, the and that's, they know, don't understand. And this is the thing that goes back to the privilege that you don't understand because you really haven't suffered from the fucking mistakes. It's like, it's like, oh, well, Leslie, it's not just that. You know, it's the gerrymandering. It's the it's the electoral. OK, so we know what the problem is. Why yeah. do you let it continuously happen? Why are we not marching? For fucking the electoral college. Why are we not? Why are we not? Do you get what I'm saying? So you know what the problem is. Oh, but you know, we're just with this, this and we can't guess you. Who voted them in? Who voted them in? There's a lot of issues that need to happen and people need to get up in these places that a Marjorie Taylor Greene is from and ask to to redo the map, you know, get elected. So you can redo the state but legislature. Let me ask you this. To I gotta ask you yep. this. When you say the gerrymandering sure. thing, if yes. we get people on the right page, it shouldn't even matter about the gerrymandering because everybody's gonna go and vote the right way. Even if you get into these areas that they make them big enough, I guess gerrymandering is when you change it and then you get the advantage of the change because people there are gonna probably vote more for you or whatever. Yes. See, don't see, and that's what I keep trying to tell everybody. Stop doing that. Stop thinking that that, oh, just go again. We gotta change them people. No, and I know I, you don't I, think that they are changeable, but they're the most, I bet you the <clears throat> biggest percent of them are changeable. I don't know. I don't know if you're, nobody's going to know if you're right, but right. I know this, that she is there because whatever that towns or town and bunch of people are, they are mostly for her. Now, it might be closer than we think. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's like a real landslide. Mm -hmm. you know, Mitch McConnell wins by an absolute landslide. Mm -hmm. So apparently all those people are like that. But her district is not like not all like that. So apparently she doesn't embarrass them wherever yeah, because, she's from. Because we have you people know? that are really miseducated and misinformed. I mean, literally, there's people who think that there's two militaries, a bad one 
and a good one. There's people yeah. walking around right now thinking, oh, fake news. No, that's the one. You know, Trump's still the president. Biden is the fake one. I don't know. It's fake. Who? Who? What, what, what writer? What, you don't even see that on the Oscars, motherfucker. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, these people need to wake up for sure, and they need to be fed information, not misinformation. They have to realize that she's an embarrassment, not somebody you, that you and, want representing you. And the news you. that you're getting is fake. Your news is fake, sir. Yeah, it's hard. Once you're, I told you, once you're in the cult, it's tough to realize you're in the cult, right? It's so fucking but upsetting, you're right on man. It. It's upsetting. It At is. this point, I want to start shooting people. Okay. Oh, I'm God. You made sense, though. Leslie. I've had the career I wanted to have. I really have. I've always wanted to be a comedian in New York City. I want to do most of my shows in New York City, make a living doing it. Then people say, but don't you want to be bigger? Should You should think bigger. You should have thought bigger. Well, you could think bigger, but then you need to have one or both of the following, an agent and or a manager. Because that's the game. And you want to think bigger and be bigger, then it's going to cost you a lot of time, money, and stress to do so. And let me lay it out for you. An agent is supposed to go get you work. And then for the joy of him attempting to land you something, he gets 10% of the work you do get. Then if you get yourself some work without his help, but get then you have to get him involved to broker it, then he also gets 10%. Even he, he didn't really do anything. So an agent is a pimp. So let's review. He gets you a gig and say, insert shit town here, five shows. You have to deal with the, you deal with the travel, hotel, rental car, weather, openers, club owners, hecklers, fans, whatever. I get fucked in that shit town. He gets 10%. Got it. No, thank you. I'm keeping that 10% from my mental health fund. Now, the manager pimp is even better because the, because so many offers are supposedly going to come in. Somebody has to help guide this juggernaut of a career I'm having. And for that, you pay 15% sometimes. Right. Because I can't make decisions by myself and as an adult. And I have no friends, no wife, no clergy, no parents or a magic eight ball to help me. I had a manager once. I got to hand it to him. He got me an audition to the comedy cellar. Not bad for five years of work. The rest of the time, nada. But... There's always a reason why there are no offers for me. Turns out it's all my fault. My headshots are old. My website is terrible. My attitude is bad. My acting needs work. My style isn't great. My jokes are too edgy. Be more autobiographical. I'm getting too old for certain things. I was too young for certain things. 9-11 changed everything. The pandemic changed everything. The economy changed everything. Streamers changed everything. Trump changed everything. You need a better, so bigger social media presence. Wait, am I hearing that I suck? Because I'm a no-talent piece of shit. Why am I on your roster? Wait, you work for me, right? So why don't I just fire you? Oh, don't do that, Lenny. We love you. We think you're hilarious. What? Now, I'm sure to get feedback from a lot of people about this one, including Leslie's representatives, even if they listen. But why would they listen? This is sold business. They're on to new business. They're busy making calls and doing lunches and coming up with strategies and submitting a for stuff and talking to people about you. Oh, just just shut the fuck up. To quote the great Rod Tidwell, show me the money. You want to get stressed out? Get famous. Just show me the money. Call me when you have something. I get stressed out watching Leslie get stressed out with these people. Manager, theatrical agent, road agent, podcast agent, literary agent, TV agent, commercial agent, movie agent, and then add publicist, therapist, assistant, glam team. Uh, you want me to be bigger? Fucking kill nah, me. I'm good. I'm good, man. Yeah, yeah, fucking kill me. Like, like you just yeah. literally just said all the horrors <laughs> of my fucking life. Like, 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 you know what? The I'll first time saying, that I, I got an agency, stress. the first time I got an agency, like, yeah. people don't know this. I'm like, I did the ice cube. I went, I went to the office with a bat because they had held my commission for two months. It's fucking December. I haven't paid my fucking rent. I haven't paid none of my bills. They owe me $3,000. And they said, like, it's got to go through accounting. Well, this bat is about the account. For my motherfucking money. <laughs> Give me my motherfucking money. No, literally, if you could have just seen that scene of the of the receptionist going, um, oh, Leslie's down here. And you could tell that they said, oh, you know, send her away. And she goes, oh, no, she has a bat. Someone needs to come down here. <laughs> like, like I'm not fucking playing. Like, 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 those lessons made me go into it. And, and if my reps are listening, they 
They better know this. If they don't, they better talk to my lawyer because my lawyer, that's the motherfucker you spend the money on. Because when it comes down to it, nothing gets past Melissa. But as far as the agents and the managers, I fucking tell their ass all the fucking time. I do not work for you. You work for me. I do not go to a gig and fucking do the gig and have to get the money from you. The money touches my hand first. How dare you take my money before I get my motherfucking money? So This is what I'm talking so, about. So this I is would what tell, I'm talking about. So I would tell them, no, and I tell them too, I tell them too, you didn't get the work, I don't pay you. You didn't get the work, I don't pay you. That That is a very straight line. Oh, did you get this? Oh, but let's know, what did you do? You didn't do nothing. No, you don't get, and it's very clear. Uh, and, and then, I, it's set up to where the money comes straight to me, so you're not gonna get your money. Like, like yeah. CAA probably still waiting on getting them paid on some shit. Yeah, they keep sending in the bills. You can keep sending them in. Keep sending them in. I'll send it when I get to it. Yeah, I'm just saying it's a very stressful. It's very stressful. Very and then, stressful. And then, and you're right. Half the time, you have to continuously tell managers and agents, "Yeah, I don't work for you." You're not the like because yeah. they will make you think you work for them. I don't fucking work for you. And if you're just sitting on your fucking ass accepting emails and not doing emails and putting my shit out there, then you're trying to form my career in a way I don't want it to be be done. Exactly. If you're because I'm I'm famous. So if people are calling in and that's what you're doing instead of like refing that shit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hey, no, I, Leslie wants to do this. She, so the shit that comes in, that's the only shit I'm going to be able to do. It's the shit that comes in. But if you're not there doing your job as a manager, dictating, hey, no, that's not what she wants to do. She wants to do this. Let me call these people. That's what a manager is supposed to do. So y'all don't get fucking get it fucked up. So you, these are the talks you got to have with your manager. I don't have no problem with telling my manager, and you can ask Avi, I will fire the fuck out of your ass. I don't give a shit about you <laughs> or this. My, I told the other, the, Josh, just talk to him. I don't enjoy talking to you. I will never talk to you again. Go through my fucking manager. Like, I have no problem. Fuck you, motherfuckers. Fuck you, motherfuckers. We're the fucking artists. And I could give a shit if you want to work with me because I'm the shit. And I'm the reason you making your money. So yeah, there it I is. mean, just again, just listening to this. Just listen my to point it. Was just listening to you get stressed out. I'm sorry, yeah. but I'm. My point is, I I'm not dealing with that stress. I'm not doing it. But see, I don't but this care is if what I'm not I keep famous. Telling you though, but it's this is fine. why I keep telling you though, like the way that we headed. You just get a good lawyer, because like at this point, like if I yeah, didn't exactly. have to have a fucking agent, like I went without an agent and a manager for a little while, because I was like, fuck this shit. I just let Melissa handle the shit but it you can only do that at a certain point i am of leslie course. jones people do have to talk to agents they do have to talk Correct. to a manager they have for to leslie jones for somebody that big i'm saying if mm. you want to know why i'm not bigger i'm not dealing with that i don't i'm fine i'm well, cool you're gonna be big because you <laughs> well then i'm gonna need you have no this choice Mich michigas all right i mean well you can always get gina to, to manage you too but then, eventually that yeah would, why that not stress gina out that would stress her out yeah, she's not good at stress. She's not. She she's maybe Neil. She's, Neil could definitely be your manager. Oh man, we we did a whole thing called if you want to go down a rabbit hole, everybody, superstartalentagency.com. We have Neil playing my fictional manager. It is uh, my pet God, project. I just of would all love time. to hear him in these meetings. He'd be like, Yeah, let me do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, he played a guy named Avi. That's why we think it's so funny that uh, Avi did you tell Avi? his name. You should tell him no, that. I oh, can't. I, so I don't have the, we don't have the heart to do it. No, so. I tell him all the fucking time. I tell him all the time. <laughs> you sound like a fucking shitty. But like I, like I had to tell him the other day. This is why I told him the other day. I said, I, after having the conversation with Josh, now I understand. Yeah. Josh is swarmy. You're just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> You're not swarmy. Yeah. You're just annoying. And he swarmy. thought that was so fucking for he was like i'm gonna get a t-shirt that says not swarmy i was like okay but that's our new thing this week you're uh you're rod tidwell just show me the money stop talking show me the, just show me the money. money bitches just show me everybody the money. everybody want a piece of leslie but everybody don't want to get on the leslie boat that's right all right well that's our show for the week thank you for joining the leslie boat this week we we enjoyed having you we on our ride time. with tom papa we had a great time it's been great um, that's the end. And thank you for listening. So, yes. but remember, 
Any photos or links for this episode will be posted at Fuckery Podcast on Instagram. Yep. That's spelled F C K R Y Podcast on all platforms. Send us your listener questions to fuckerypodcast at gmail.com. Letters and voice memos are welcome. If you want to follow me, I'm at Lenny Marcus NYC on all platforms. Follow Leslie at Lesdog. That's L E S D O G with three G's on Twitter, four G's on Instagram, and five G's on TikTok. Why, Leslie? Because I'm a mother. The fucking G son. Exactly. And her agent and manager know. The it's Fuckery with Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus was created by stars Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus. The show is produced by Judith Cargbo. And our audio engineer in Los Angeles is the great Jordan Duffy. Jordan our New York City Duffy. audio engineers and border operator is Dan the Man Spaventa. <laughs> our production <laughs> coordinator is Abby Aguilar. Aguilar. Music for this show is done by Marina Pais. This is an Earwolf production. Because a wolf has ears. Mm.